Local. Live. Interactive. This is Rogers Television, Toronto. Game three of the OHL East final was a dandy. Ice Dogs struck early and often to lead 2-0, but the Majors came right back. Tyler Haskins with a pair. They win 4-3. They lead the series 2-1 after winning at St. Mike's. But back in Mississauga, different story. Patrick O'Sullivan works his magic with a pair of goals. Ice Dogs win. The series is tied. The best of seven down to a best of three. Game five next. Ice Dogs and the Majors on Rogers. at Toronto St. Michael's College School Arena. This is Game 5 OHL East Final. The Mississauga Ice Dogs in the Toronto St. Michael's Majors. The series tied 2-2. Hi, everybody. Roger Lajoie with you once again and looking forward to Game 5 tonight in what should be a crowded Toronto St. Michael's College School Arena. And why not? What a great series these teams putting on. First four games, nothing decided. The goalie's a big factor. Who gets the edge tonight? We'll find out shortly. Let's get upstairs to our play-by-play -play team and their thoughts. Dan Dunleavy and Brian Shanahan. Gentlemen. Roger, thank you so much. Boy, you live for these games this time of year in the Ontario Hockey League. Not only are the NHL playoffs going on, the Ontario Hockey League playoffs. Brian Shanahan joins us for this series, and it's been a great one so far. I know you saw some action in Mississauga the other night. Yep. And Lucas Grawweiler is a player we're going to spotlight tonight for Mississauga. Yeah, Lucas Grawweiler, he's a 20-year-old rookie from Zurich, Switzerland. And this guy has been a very reliable player for these guys. During the regular season, he scored 12 goals, 16 assists. But in the playoffs, three goals, nine assists for 12 points. That's third in the team. But most importantly, he's got the best plus minus on the team. He's a plus eight in these playoffs. And that's great to have when you have players that like to open the game up, like a Patrick O'Sullivan. You've got a Zanowski as well. So you've got a guy that looks after both ends of the ice. As far as our spotlight player goes for St. Mike's tonight, it's not a player that will necessarily jump out at you when you look at the stat sheet, and that's Colin Power. You're right. He doesn't necessarily jump out. You. He's, he's a steady player, though. He, he's a good checker. He's another 20-year-old Colin Power. He's from Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. It's his third year in the league. He played for Guelph the first two years, and he actually has Memorial Cup experience. So he's been in the big games. He's a reliable checker, but he's also got four goals. That's second on the team. So when you get goals like that from a player like him, it's bonus. And they're expecting him to dig hard and show his experience. As far as the goaltending matchup goes, they're always the spotlight players. And let's take a look at tonight's duo. And it's the same duo that have gone throughout the entire series so far. And that is David Chance and Justin Peters. And as you take a look at their numbers, you see they are almost identical. Right throughout the entire playoffs, David Chance and Justin Peters have been going toe-to-toe. -to -toe, and you knew they would do the same in this series. David Chance maybe with a few more shutouts in the playoffs so far, and I know Brian will highlight that later on in tonight's game as we continue on here. As Roger mentioned, the stands are packed here at St. Mike's. You can hear the noise in the background. The flags are flying. Alexis Shook, it is your job to keep these fans shaking all night long. All right, thanks so much, guys. Well, I've been talking to Toronto and Mississauga fans as they've been walking through these doors, and I cannot tell you how excited everyone is for Game 5. I've never seen so many jerseys and faces painted that I have tonight, and I'm looking for the fan of the game, and tonight people will be receiving free pizza pizza coupons and some Hockey Hall of Fame tickets. But right now, let's send it over to Roger. Alexis, thank you very much indeed, and the fans are excited, and why not here at St. Mike's? A great Game 5 coming up. Series tied 2-2. We're down to the last four teams in the OHL, so let's take a look at how they sit. The Bobby Orr Trophy up for grabs in this series. Series tied 2-2. Game 5 tonight. Game 6 Sunday back at Mississauga. 8 o'clock start. The West Final. Wayne Gretzky Trophy up for grabs there. And the Guelph Storm leading the series 3-2. A chance to close it out tonight. We'll follow that game for you throughout the course of the evening. Well, keys to victory goes without saying. The goaltenders. Chance, five shutouts. Peters. Four shutouts. Who gets the upper hand tonight? The forwards, Brent and Peralta, need to score more. And how do you stop O'Sullivan? Power play and, of course, home ice. That's always a factor when you're playing the majors. There couldn't be two more different arenas than Toronto St. Michael's College School Arena and the Hershey Center in Mississauga. This is an old barn. It's uncomfortable for visiting teams. The majors are counting on it to get them the leg up in this series. Game five is coming up. Let's go upstairs to the booth. Dan Dunleavy and Brian Shanahan. Roger, 
You couldn't have been more correct about the difference in the venues and how it's affected this series. But I will say this, Brian Shanahan, and Roger knows all about it. Last year, the St. Mike's Majors had to go from this rink to Belleville, a much larger ice surface, and they actually fared pretty well in a series that eventually went down to a seventh game as well. It's been somewhat puzzling as to why they've had so much trouble in Mississauga throughout the regular season. They didn't have those problems. Yeah, as you said, it during the regular season, they did well in Mississauga, but it's been a real homer series. And in fact, in the playoffs, St. Mike's is 8-0, or sorry, 8-1 at home, 2-5 on the road. So it's not just Mississauga Arena. They have not had a lot of success outside of here. Mark Hicks, Glenn Anderson, Joe Celestin will watch tonight's game here at St. Mike's. And before we get to the action, Rogers volunteer Susie Scott will be doing the honors tonight with the singing of our national anthem as she now makes her way onto the red carpet here at St. Mike's. at some of the fans in attendance here at St. Mike's. And as Roger mentioned, it is jam-packed. And there's some of the faithful with the faces painted and ready to go. And boy, if the St. Mike's Majors ever needed the home crowd to help them out in a series, this is it, Brian. As we've talked about already, it's been a homer series. But if St. Mike's could trip up here tonight, it would be the wrong time to do it yeah, in I, these playoffs. You know, I think you're absolutely right. There is more pressure on St. Mike's here than there is in Mississauga. St. Mike's has not been down in the playoffs yet. They won their first series in seven, but they were never behind in the series. Their last series, they won in five. Mississauga has been down. They know what it's like, but if they can steal this one and go home to a place where St. Mike's has not scored a goal in the series, there would be a ton of pressure. And we're about ready to go here in Toronto, and game five is underway. Mississauga and the visiting dark beauties in Toronto in the home lights. And Stokes starts out with it behind his own net, the Sarnia native with the Mississauga Ice Dog fans already at it in the background. Curran now at his own line, skates out the center ice, he'll dump it in, Bass will give chase. McKeever on the ice for St. Mike's in his first shift, he took a couple of penalties for hitting from behind in game number four at Mississauga. And the St. Mike's Majors took a few too many penalties and gave Mississauga an opportunity with the extra man. We've also seen in the series, O'Brien, that when Toronto has the man advantage. This is Saga very dangerous when they are shorthanded as Patrick O'Sullivan is on the ice. He's already counted one shorthanded goal in this series. Well, well, neither team has done much in the power play this series. It's just been tough, stifling defense all around. Mr. Saga in their own end. Curran on the sideboards. Turns it over. Peralta fires a shot. The first save is made by Chance on the game's first shot on goal. Wilson stands his man up. Jarrett at the Mississauga line, now fired in by Kadatsky, seeing his first action in the series. Icing was indicated, but then waved off by the linesman. And now Quincy fans on the clear behind his own net, Stokes on the boards, takes it out of the corner. Sends one's up to center ice, turned over Peralta. Pass for Vanderbeek and fires a shot, and Chance is out to cover up, and Mississauga a little shaky coming out of their own end. Well, that was a dangerous turnover, but Chance bailed them out. There you these are the lines combination for Mississauga today. The big line, of course, is O'Sullivan, who's got four goals, four of their eight goals in this series. And second line, Grawweiler, he's our spotlight player we talked about. Face off, O'Sullivan against Rorabeck to the 
right of chance and Rohrbeck will get the wave and power will step in here's our first look at our spotlight player up against a pretty good one O'Sullivan gets the face off to Knowles the former major skates up to center ice little feather pass around McKeever but the majors are there to cover up Rudicella not a big man out there for Mississauga physically but a big man when it comes to heart as you got a first look and now he'll go to the corners to get the puck for you there's a shot Peters makes the save bouncing puck Vanderbeeken against the end boards. Rudicella there trying to dig it out along with Knowles. Vander Beacon shielding that puck from big 2-7 of the Ice Dogs. Coming up to the two-minute mark into the first period. No score. Game five. Series tied at two apiece. The Eastern Conference Final also underway tonight. Guelph home against London and Guelph can wrap it up with a win on home ice tonight. Leading that series 3-2 after an overtime win by London. At the John Labatt center last night. Backhander by Knowles, and he needs to get off on a change. Perry throws it back up to center for St. Mike's. Elliott is there, and he throws one cross ice. Too far for Bain, and icing is called as Perry touches up with 17.42. Remaining here in a scoreless first period. Well, this is the St. Mike's line combinations, and you see Tim Brent on the first line there with Peralta and Kratzky. And playing his first game of the series, but you got to feel that Brent has the pressure on him. He's only got one assist in this series, although he leads St. Mike's in the playoffs. I'm sure he wants to pick up his play. Puck out at center ice. Just tipped across the line. Bain there on his backhand. He just clears the zone, and now Grauweiler is pushed off the puck by Perry, who comes up pretty high defensively to make that stop for St. Mike's, and Toronto fires it right back into the Mississauga zone. Now Bain again. At his own line, pressure this time from Boyce. Zimmerman fires it in, and no icing. Indicated again by one linesman, waved off by the other. Kept in, there's a shot, the save made by Peters. Elliott off the point, trying to keep that puck in the major zone, and he does not offside against the Ice Dogs. There you get a look at Justin Peters, the second-ranked goaltender in these playoffs. When you look at the stats, as far as goals against average, 1.83. This is the Mississauga scratches there, basically going with the same lineup they had in their 3-0 victory on Wednesday. O'Leary played the last game here in Toronto, but as you mentioned, Brian, the way things went in Mississauga, why would you make a change? The majors made one significant change as well, and we'll talk about it. In just a moment, as Wilson is back behind his own net, he's pressured on the puck. Flutterbuck, rookie out of Weldon, Ontario, clears the zone out to center ice, but no puck possession for the majors so far. Haskins out there now, he's had a good series for St. Mike's. Jarrett up to center ice, Vitarelli intercepts a pass across the line, fires a shot, pad save, rebound, and he fires it again. Just misses short side. Stokes behind the net, pressured by Clutterbuck. Abraham takes it along the board. He bumped off the play, but gets it ahead for Curran at center ice. And the longtime ice dog can't get the puck deep across the line. And now Dale Good at the Majors blue line for Clutterbuck. On his backhand to center ice. Throws it towards the Mississauga line. That's as far as it goes. And now Stokes up ahead for Zanoski, who takes a hit from Wilson. Zanoski never did get a handle on that puck. And behind his own net, Van Belagui, who shaved i don't know if he shaved before the last game in mississauga usually brian players let that go through the playoffs but old dustin who's got the pretty good hairdo going underneath the bonnet decided <laughs> to shave the facial hair zanoski jumps on a turnover in the mississauga zone he's got quincy up with him zanoski over the left wing side drops down on the play and kept it at the point by committee but not for long now the majors three on one the other way cross ice tim brett Holds it, gets around one man, looks in front of the net. Peralta can't get the shot away. Puck goes into the corner. Drawweiler watching Peralta. Now Quincy picks up the check. And Cavetti skates it out for Mississauga. Coming up to five minutes into this opening period. Still no score. And offside is called against the well, ice they, they didn't make much of a scoring chance out of that three-on-one. These are, the, these are the scratches for St. Mike's. Uh, the significant one is Thomas Waugh played the last game. He is out for uh, Kadaski, who is back in. And I guess I missed, you were right, uh, Mark O'Leary. Uh, yeah, Mark O'Leary had played every game. He is a scratch for Mississauga, and I think in his place is Scott Zimmerman. So that's the one change they've made since their last win. Elliott at center ice. He just fires it into the Toronto zone. It goes around the boards and parked now behind Justin Peters. Wilson will skate it out in front of his own netminder. Toronto working the right wing up over center power. He fires it in. Chance traps it behind the net. 
clearing attempt cut off by Power. Centered in front, bouncing puck, and Shantz doesn't know where it is. The Majors think they've scored, but the referee has not pointed behind the Mississauga goaltender. Well, that puck did come loose. I don't think it went in the net, and I don't think the referees are even debating it, but it did come loose, and Shantz turned around. No discussion with the gold judge. Let's go down to our fan in the stands with Alexis. All right, thanks so much, guys. I'm here with Ari. Ari used to be a die-hard Oshawa Generals fan until he kind of got out of the uh, playoffs. What's your take on this series? I think it's a fairly even series, and they'll probably go seven games, but uh, either team could take this series, yes. All right, thanks so much, Ari, for being such a fantastic fan. We have two free pizza pizza coupons for you. Let's send it back up to the studio, guys. Alexis, thank you very much. A face-off will come in the Mississauga zone. Rohrbeck leaning in against Rudicella. Majors win the draw. Off the point, Wilson throws it at the net. We'll see a lot of that tonight. The Majors, of course, shut out in their last out against Mississauga, so they'll be throwing whatever they can at chance tonight. Already four shots on net for Toronto as the puck is frozen behind the Mississauga keeper. Well, Dan, Chance had a great year. In fact, he was named to the all-rookie team today, but... He got one shutout this season in 43 games. He's got five shutouts in his 18 playoff games already. Timing is everything. This time, Rohrbeck will get the push from the faceoff circle. Power steps in and beats O'Sullivan to the sideboards with it. Now Power down in the corner. O'Sullivan on the check. Coming away with it, Power. Rohrbeck at the dot, takes the shot and fires it high. And that one goes over the glass, but the Majors now starting to get some punch possession. But the key there, Brian, winning the faceoff by Power. A nice job to step in after Rohrbeck was waved out of the faceoff circle. And now, number nine for the Majors from Oshawa, Ontario, will lean in to take the draw against O'Sullivan again. And to the right of David Shant. It looks like this is going to be the line that's matched up against O'Sullivan, who's been so dangerous. Rohrbeck, give him power. any room on the rush. That's how he generates that speed on that wing. And it's not just the speed, he's getting such a dangerous shot as well. There he is behind his own net, O'Sullivan. Abraham knocks it down, Knowles takes a bump. No possession for Mississauga, and now it's center ice, Wilson. Rohrbeck just tips it across the line, Stokes, Abraham, Knowles. Nice puck movement by Mississauga to clear the zone as they make changes. Rudicello going off, O'Sullivan stays on. He's got the puck and fires a shot, saving the trade by Justin Peters. Puck into the corner. And enough bodies on the ice for the officials to whistle that one down before any harm is done. It shows that playoff contributions of the big guys here and Brent Peralta and Haskins, 34 of the 99 points in the playoffs and you see the big guys, O'Sullivan, Quincy the defenseman and Grawweiler, 41 points of the 100 points their team has. But uh, we saw that earlier chance from O'Sullivan in playoff hockey, you don't get a lot of chances, but he is so good at capitalizing on mistakes. Majors dump it in, Rand. Give it chase, Daryl Boyce. With that check, they create the turnover. Behind the Mississauga, net, back to the point. Back for Boyce, Ted Perry at the point. Little soft pass inside, Rand can't fire it. Passes off, and Rand and Boyce playing the one-two. Now deflected oh. in front, and Chance had the pad down. And credit the butterfly style for that save, as he had no idea the puck hit him. Now along the board, Strawweiler tries to tip it around, and he does, and Rand's got to get back to prevent the two-on-one for Mississauga. Across the line, Justin Peters may have got a piece of that shot. Fired hot. Majors clear it out to center ice. For a quick rush by the ice dog, set up by Scott Zimmerman. Product of the Detroit Little Caesars well, hockey program. And actually, a couple of good scoring chances in, in both ends of the ice there. Brandon Elliott from Orangeville, Ontario, having a good series. He's playing solid, tough defense. The big four, guy. 225. Exactly. You sure Terry Sanderson doesn't want him for Sunday's <laughs> Toronto Rock playoff game. <laughs> It'd be safe to say if you're that size and you're from Orangeville, you probably suited up for the Northmen at one point in your hockey days. As we've got a penalty called on the play behind the net. Jarrett and McKeever got tied up, and I'll tell you what. I mean, McKeever's a very useful defenseman. That's probably understating the fact, but this man is taking far too many penalties for Dave Cameron's liking, I bet. Well, let's watch McKeever. Well, actually, I thought we were showing a replay there, but uh, McKeever, you're right, he's going to the penalty box, and he's, he's got to stay out, but 
Mississauga hasn't really made them pay yet. Now there's a chance in front. Payne fires it wide. And again, Peters down to that butterfly stance. And he was beat upstairs to think he'd get the puck there. They tried, but fired it behind the net. Now along the boards. Quincy coming down to help out O'Sullivan. Just directs it behind the net. Peters out to play it. Quincy, backhand at the point. Back into the corner. Al Peralta comes down to try and clear. He fires it off the glass. Takes a strange bounce. O'Sullivan, backhand down low. Doesn't get there. And now, look out. The Majors clear it. But instead of firing it all the way down the ice, it goes right to the Majors bench. And Dave Cameron's not happy about that as he's letting Van Belegu know all about it. I just see the bad boys on both teams, the guys with the penalty minutes. And Lehman is in front for St. Mike's. Face off just outside the Toronto line, and Dave Cameron still giving it to his troops out there. And he knows he's got to light a fire under these guys. And Roger Lajoie has mentioned it a number of times on the St. Michael's Majors webcast, where you can hear all the Majors games home and away that this Majors team has just not gotten to that next level yet, and I think it might be frustrating Coach Cameron a little bit. They built the team for this run, but they haven't found that next level in their game to this point. When you look back to last year's playoffs, I keep talking about Scott Horvath and the job he did. He just put this team on his back as far as goal scores go in the playoffs, and they're looking for that guy to do the same this year. Mississauga still on the shooting skills power play at the point. O'Sullivan takes the shot. That gets through, but it's wide. Peters takes it. Short hop off the end boards, and he'll hold for a faceoff with 57 seconds left in our first power play of the hockey game. And Mississauga, we talked about how their power play has not been too strong. Neither team has been tearing it apart. Mississauga is only 10% on the power play, scoring 11 goals and 103 opportunities. They've had more opportunities than anybody in the playoffs. Mississauga wins the draw. Abraham and Stokes at the point. Abraham deflected in front. Peters covers up, and he'll hold it for a faceoff with Jarrett giving Tim Brent an extra shot in front of the St. Mike's netminder. Again, it all starts with winning the faceoff, Brian, and getting that puck back to the point right away. And they're getting in front of the net for the deflection. I think that the scoring chance was there, except uh, Ruta Sala just couldn't get it up on the deflection. Tim Brent now waves out of the face-off circle. Sullivan just parts himself there and waits. Majors keep getting waved out. Abraham keeps it into the point. Stokes, right side, back to Abraham. Stokes creeping in. Now tries to throw it into the slot. That's deflected off the stick of Peralta. Jarrett behind the net. Throws it back towards the point. Takes a Mississauga bounce back behind the Toronto net. The Majors had all left the area. They were fortunate that it didn't go right onto a stick of an ice dog, and that's offside as Quincy was racing off the bench and could not get there in time 27 seconds left in the Mississauga power play they've had puck possession Brian and as you mentioned opportunities but this uh, power play seems to be lasting forever well <laughs> as you said they have had good control of puck and they've had it in there they've had deflections they just haven't been able to put away the chances Laura Beck will take the face off against Rudicella Mississauga just push it across the Toronto line Ed Perry just stands in front of Zanoski, throws him to the sideboards. Rorabek in to try to dig that puck free as well. Gets to the line, now it's out. Van Belagui and Rorabek doing the dirty work for St. Mike's. Power will pick up Quincy. And now the Majors pressuring the Mississauga Ice Dogs in their own zone, not letting them get any momentum up ice. Van Belagui creates a turnover. Throws it into the corner, Rorabek. He's hauled down, no call. Helmet comes off, and Rohrbeck's got to get onto the bench, and Sadowski brings it up across center ice and fires one of Peters, played that rather nonchalantly, and the St. Mike's Majors don't appear, I don't know if it's into the game or what, but they've got to pick it up a step, and behind the play, Dustin Van Belagui is very slow to get to the bench, and that would be a major loss for St. Mike's, pardon the pun, as he makes his way to the Pines now, still doubled over as he takes a seat. Stokes. Pass for Grawweiler, left wing across the line. Pass inside for Zanowski, and they had Payne still in front of the net. They just could not get him the puck. And the Majors can't clear. It's kept in by Stokes. Now Toronto will flip it out to center ice. Ten minutes and eight seconds remaining here in the opening period. No score. And this Eastern Conference final, game number five, series tied at two apiece. 
Dokes will set up behind his own net. The Sarnia native will watch this Grawweiler from Zurich, Switzerland, skates in front of him. And now Abraham, he gives the puck away. Haskins across the line. Can't dig it along the boards. Now he just fires it around behind the net. Stokes watched by Rand, the bouncing puck in front. Haskins fires one. And Chance didn't know where it was, but he covers up for a save. Both goaltenders fighting the puck a little bit tonight. Yeah, a giveaway there, and Haskins has been the most dangerous shooter for St. Mike's. Got two goals in this series. But watch the turnover here, and I don't think it's the fault of Chance. In fact, Chance does a good job of remaining calm and facing that shooter. Bad bounce off the side of the net. It's easy to fight the puck here at St. Mike's because of the bounces and the short boards. Chance says he loves playing here because you always have to be aware and alert. He says it keeps you in the game, whereas in some rinks you have the tendency maybe to nod off a little bit from time to time. And you can't do that here in Toronto. Vitarelli, he's got to get going for the majors as well in this series. He gets the puck across the line, but they need a scoring touch. Vitarelli finishing his check. Clutterbuck in there as well. And now Wilson has possession at his own blue line. Up at center ice, Clutterbuck with the tip across the line. But Brandon Elliott. Orangeville native, a cross ice pass. Anthony Butera out of Woodbridge, back for Elliott. Up at center ice, deflected into the Toronto zone, and Bass will give chase on his own deflection. Peters behind the net, around the far boards, and now Vitarelli will not catch up to it before Elliott. Elliott's back and plays it for Bain. Backhand pass, Butera in his own zone. Eight minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the opening period as the puck is cleared again into the Majors bench. Dave Cameron has seen enough of that, I think here in a scoreless first period. Well, you'd have to think that Mississauga might be more pleased with the way the game is going so far. The longer they can stay stay in, the longer they can hold uh, St. Mike's from scoring a goal, the more frustrated St. Mike's is going to get. Oh, we have to remember the last game in here, Mississauga took a 2-0 lead, and St. Mike's stormed back to win that one 4-3. Kemeni in his own zone off the face off. He's rubbed out on the boards by Peralta. Majors fire it right out to center ice, bouncing puck. Kameni knocks it down, go to Sella out there with O'Sullivan and Knowles. O'Sullivan trying to get it inside for Knowles. Puck goes high into the air, taken behind the Majors net. Rudicella turns and fires, and Peter saw it coming all the way. Covered up short side, and he gloves it and holds it for a faceoff in the Toronto zone. Well, Rudicella is the captain of the team. He's one of the overage players on Mississauga from Oakville, Ontario. 57 games regular season he had nine goals eight assists just one point in this series always got three goals throughout the playoffs majors win the draw mckeever he's been in the sin bin turns it over in front and down to cover up with a pad is peters but there is something in the air tonight as far as turnovers here in this first period crazy bounces lazy passes nonchalantly played pucks at times and we're only just over halfway through the first period i don't know if the players are edgy or tight brian or what's I going th on. i think the referee is uh, making some calls on this play too now well, sullivan gave a shot to, i thought it was to, to uh number 11 chris kern but that's not who's going in the penalty box it's Knowles and mckeever so mckeever for his second penalty of this game already and even though it's Two and two. Again, well, Nathan McKeever, he's got to stay on the ice for the St. Mike's Majors to win this series. He's a valuable defenseman, and I know I'm harping on it already, but he <laughs> took two last night. He's already taken two tonight. And it's a pretty good way and a quick way to wear your defense down as well if you take one of your horses and put him in the belly box for too many minutes a night. All the Majors at their own line. Wilson. Makes a bump from Kometi and turns the puck over. Here's Rudicella. He fires one in on Peters. Peters will leave him behind the net. Wilson. O'Sullivan circling and watching. Rudicella, Kometi, and Quincy for Mississauga. Rorabek, good and power for St. Mike's. Four on four hockey. Here we go with the Majors breaking out. Right wing. Over the line, good. Working on Kometi. One hand on the stick behind the net. Back to the point. Rorabek. It's the one-timer through, but it's a soft one. Was hoping for deflection. Slashing going on behind the play, and I can't believe the referee sits there and watches it all and then calls power. The referee stood there and watched each player give each other a two-hander, 
and just let him go. And then all of a sudden, he calls a penalty. Well, the only problem with that, though, Dan, is the referees like me. By the time I turned, all I saw was Colin Power giving the punch. Well, take a watch. Watch the replay right here. Now, watch the nah, referee. You're right. The referee he's watching should... it. One, two, and then he's going to call that. Now nah, they should both be going. They should both uh, and be And I don't going. mean to call that as a Toronto play-by-play -play guy. The bottom line is... You're going to let them swing away at each other. You don't decide all of a sudden to call no, you're one. right. And if you miss it, that's one thing. Yeah. I missed that originally, but we saw in the replay that the referee was watching that whole incident. That's where you send them both off just to send a message. Well, the message the referee sent initially was, okay, I'm going to let you guys swing at each other. I'm going to let you other. guys go. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden, well, no, I changed my mind. Slashing's all right. You just can't punch him. Exactly. It wasn't even a punch. It was a face rush. So it's a power play for Mississauga now. Four on three. A shoeless Joe's power play. Shula Stokes Restaurant, where every day is game day. Stokes will set up behind his own net. And like we said, their power play has not been good, but I wouldn't want to give him a four on three. It's a lot easier to score on a four on three than it is a five on four. You don't want to give him these chances. Rawweiler behind the net. Stokes, you know they're looking for O'Sullivan. And he's parked to the left of Justin Peters. Trying to get that puck down low and cross ice it for number 89. Stokes at the point. This is where Abraham might want to take the shot deflected by Good, and he almost put it five-hole on his own netminder. But this is a situation, Brian. You tell me what you think. You can tell they're waiting to get the puck to O'Sullivan instead of sometimes taking a shot that's there. Oh, you're right. I don't think they had their top two uh, defensive uh, power play specialists on the ice there, but they are making a change now. And they've got Quincy, who's got 13 points. He was a fourth-round draft choice to the Detroit Red Wings. He can quarterback the power play, and I think he can also shoot instead of always looking for O'Sullivan. Well, we know uh, Van Belagui is healthy enough after going off the ice in some amount of pain early on as he's back onto the ice, and he cleared the puck into the Mississauga zone, but that quickly, O'Sullivan carries it right back and fires it in. Good, with a nice bump on Brawweiler. That's what they need from number six in Toronto, and he clears the puck the length of the ice. David Chance will leave it. Or Butera. In fact, that was a huge hit he just made on Drawweiler. A, a dumping that it looked like the puck was going to go to the Mississauga. And good and able to team to ice it by outpowering Drawweiler. And it's iced again by the Majors. Now 37 seconds remaining in a five on four for Mississauga. So the four on three, which did afford the likes of O'Sullivan some extra room out there. The Majors able to kill that off. Now the five on four. O'Sullivan's on the bench. Quincy. Left wing dumps it in the corner. He's put down, and now Lehman will clear the zone and fire it the length of the ice. 15 seconds remaining in the power play for Mississauga. Quincy lost the bonnet. He's got to go to the bench. He just throws the helmet onto the ice. And the linesman picks it up. Rudicella, left wing across the line. Tadoski trailing. McKeever in. He bumps Rudicella off the puck. Bouncing disc out of the box. Power! just can't get the pass and he would have been alone on a breakaway behind Stokes 530 remaining in a scoreless first let's go back into the stands to Alexis Sook all right thanks so much guys I'm here with the Weston Dodgers Nicholas how did you guys do in the season well we came in last in the season unfortunately oh, no you did who are you cheering for today Matthew the majors all right thanks so much let's send it back up to you guys they came in last but did they have fun exactly well, he took it well. He's very well spoken, young man. Gotta be the captain of the team. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Majors with Boyce trying to get possession out of the corner. And the Majors really dodged the bullet on that power play. Mississauga was ineffective, especially in a 4 front 3 They didn't even get it set up. Here's a race, Jared. He fires one short side and really ran out of room on that right wing as Toronto got caught a little bit. Justin Peters didn't know whether to come out or stay in his net. Garrett chased after that slow roller. And Garrett Van Belagui right in front of Peters with some pushing and shoving. Again, the referee lets it go. Cameron takes a bump but gets the puck ahead for Rand who fires it into the corner as best he can with Elliott Craig all over him. Now Stokes and Jarrett and Gutera on the Mississauga defense charged with getting the puck out of their own zone. And now we're going to go downstairs. Roger Lejoie with a look at what's coming up in our first intermission.
Dan, thank you very much. And coming up during our first intermission, Chris Curran of the Mississauga Ice Dogs will join me in studio. We'll also take a look, of course, at our play of the period and how our spotlight players are doing along with the first period scoring summary, if there are any uh, goals to talk about in this first period. All that coming up. Let's go back upstairs. Well, you talked about Brian in the opening. Not a lot of goals in this series, and the trend continues here, at least with 425 remaining in the opening period. Elliott out of his reach behind the net. Peralta throws it down low. Buterin, Kadatsky. Kadatsky takes Buterin down. Could have been a call there. Play continues. Elliott rolling puck gives it away. Rohrbeck turns, fires, and that one bounces just wide. Buterin along the boards. Chad Payne show gets it up for Bain. The puck bounces in the air. Knocked down by Peralta. I haven't said the name Tim Brent all that much here in the opening period as Drawweiler takes it in his own end. Kadatsky watching him. Now Elliott takes a look up ice, cross ice through Terra. He'll try the center for Payne Show. Can't handle the pass. And now the Majors, Flutterbuck, just dumps it into the Mississauga zone. And then he's dumped by Bain at center ice. Elliott only walking out. Now the pass on the left wing for Bain. Quick one around center ice and Van Belagui. He'll take it down behind his own net with some pressure coming from Payne Show. And the Majors do clear up to center ice, but it's fired in offside, Mississauga. With 3.27 to go in the first, still no score, and no Tim Brent on the ice either. I don't... Well, you know, I think he missed that last shift, if I'm not mistaken. He's, he's on the bench his, with his helmet off. You know you know what I think happened? I think he lost his helmet in his last shift, and he just didn't get it. You can't go back on the ice without right. a helmet. One of the players on the bench might want to throw him one next time and say, hey, more of mine. As the puck is cleared in the ice. major zone, this guy needs ice time tonight. I've seen that happen once before. <laughs> the players are trying to negotiate helmets on their heads. Doesn't no always work. Cavetti in his own zone, takes a bump, gets the puck out to the neutral zone, but not beyond center ice, so Sullivan will do it himself. And boy, can he ever look at this move, we'll trying to go outside on Van Belagui. No call, and O'Sullivan takes an extra shot down on the ice from Clutterbuck, who lay on top of him, and the loose puck rolls on to Peters, but I'll tell you what, this is an interesting job of officiating tonight. I'm not being critical, I'm saying interesting. There could have been two or three penalties called against St. Mike's on that play. And well, so Sullivan was I, on the ice taking I, a couple. I don't think it was a trip. I think he... Well, not that, but watch this coming up right there. I know, you, you give a little shot here and there, that's where the referee's got to get close and give your warning, because you know whenever they get a chance, they're going to give him as many shots as they can. Those are tough ones to call because they're so in tight. Again, it's easy to say from standing up here, but the objective of the game over the last couple of years has been to free up the star players, and if you allow players just to pile on, that doesn't really help you accomplish your goal. You were talking about the goal stats you followed from years back when your brother played in the Ontario Hockey League and how they've dropped off. Yeah, I was, I was looking at it today. This year they have, uh, yeah, this season they averaged six goals a game in the OHL. When my brother played back in 86, it was nine goals a game, so it's... Like the NHL, the goal scoring has really come down in the OHL. Good. Backs up to his home blue line. Watched by Payne Show. Cross ice. Now Wilson. Not a lot of room as he skates it right into four ice dog players and can't get the puck deep. Stokes at center ice. Rawwiler takes the feet across the line. Zanoski with him in the slot. Tries to get it in front. Zanoski turns. Fire scores! Zanoski oh, went to the right place. And he was there at the right time to make a one nothing ice dog. But a great job by Grawweiler, who knows he's our spotlight player of the game. Grawweiler sets this one up, and Zanowski with his sixth cashes in. This is Grawweiler going wide, using his speed to make the play. Now he just centers it in front, and it eventually gets on Zanowski's stick, who spins around to get his sixth goal of the of the playoffs. In fact, only Patrick O'Sullivan has more goals. More goals for Mississauga than him. Wilson was the defenseman standing in front of Zanowski, who just did not do enough to tie up his stick. And now the Majors come back. Grand across the line. His shot is blocked by the skate of Kameni. Boyce bumps with him in the end boards. Working in the right wing corner. Rand there trying to dig it free as well. Kameni pins Boyce against the end boards. Rand. Now the left wing corner, penalty coming up against the Ice Dogs. Rangers with puck possession, trying to work it out front to Lehman in the slot. Lehman waiting for it, bouncing puck. 
And Gutierre intercepts it. There could almost be two penalties on the play as Mississauga knocked the net off when that puck came out front. But I don't think we're going to see two calls. No, we're not, but a tripping call has been called and it'll give Mississauga, or sorry, uh, St. Mike's a chance and their power play has been pretty in ineffective as well at 15%, a little better than Mississauga, but Curran going to the penalty box. Who we'll be hearing from intermission time. He's an overage player. You mentioned from Oakville, Ontario. So the faceoff will be in the Mississauga zone to the right of David Chance. Majors at one point had the shots at to 4-2. They're now down 12-7 as well as 1-0 on the board. It's the Shula Stills power play for St. Mike's. And Gulligui at the point gets the shot through. Bouncing puck in front. There's Levin steps into one and he has the top shelf there, but he fired it wide. Peralta lets it go to the corner. Vitarelli. Tim Price facing after it. O'Sullivan out there. Dangerous shorthanded as well. O'Sullivan on the boards. He'll backhand it to the line, but not out. Lehman for Tim Brent. Pressured early on the puck. Quincy. He'll backhand it all the way down the ice. And Peters comes out. And Bellagui, Lehman, and Brent back in their own zone to start the breakout for St. Mike's. One minute remaining here in the first period. And the Ice Dogs are up 1-0 on the majors as Toronto fires it into the Mississauga zone. David Shantz gives it to Tim Brent on the board. Van Bellagui cross ice Lehman. Lehman holds it. Looks at Peralta. Left board steps the shot away and didn't miss by much. Van Bellagui up high on the right side. Pressure by Drawweiler and he throws it away and slams the stick on the boards with only 32 seconds left in this opening period. Now Lehman will carry it across the line. Lehman taken out along the boards. Penalty coming up to Mississauga. Stokes will go and the Majors will have a two-man advantage for 48 seconds, which remain on the first penalty, but only 23.1 remain here in the opening period. Well, this will be a big chance for St. Mike's. They had good control during that power play, but they seem to lose their composure a little bit. I, tell you, I guarantee you what's going on in the mind of the players right now, both Toronto and Mississauga. They have no clue what's going to be called tonight. They have no oh, I idea. Think you're right. I, I think that was a pretty iffy call considering they were one man down. They saw they'll do it all over again. That last power play, Peralta was getting himself open on the one-timer side. I think Lehman kind of just banned on a setup. And after that, their defense seemed to lose their composure. They get rushed their shots or rushed their passes. And, See if they can get Tim Brent, yet. the only man back, takes the shot. Save is made by chance. 15 seconds now left in the period. Brent at the point. Holds it, passes off for Cameron back to Brent. They want Brent to take the shot. He's got to be careful. He takes the front deflection, and Rorabek knocks it wide. Five seconds to go and a penalty coming up. Oh, no, just the high sticking call. Arm went in the air. See, even I don't know what's going to be called now. <laughs> go all the way down the ice into the major zone with 4.6 seconds to go. So that is... Almost like an icing call on a power play. They're looking a little bit tight on that power play. Brent and uh, Cameron are trying to play give and go to set each other up for the uh, one-timer, but they've got to get a little closer to each other, make the passes a little bit softer. They're giving the goalie too much time to set up. Quincy at the point, throws it behind the net. Tim Rose is going to hold on to it. So when we start the second period, the Majors will have a power play for 24 seconds with... Two extra men on the ice. These two teams are only separated by a single point in the regular season. I think maybe the St. Mike's Majors and a lot of people around this team thought they were just going to win this series and they were going to get to the OHL final, but they're finding out here in a pretty hard way that the Mississauga Ice Dogs are not going away. Well, I don't know if St. Mike team would have felt that the fans might have, but I think the team has a lot of respect for this Mississauga team. They've got a big power play coming up, though. It's a huge one, our intermission with Roger Lajoie coming up next. You're watching the OHL playoffs on Rogers Television. There's a young fan enjoying himself here in the first intermission at Toronto St. Michael's College School Arena. Is that thumbs up or thumbs down there? What do you think, young fellow? one nothing. If you're an Ice Dogs fan, you're pretty happy. They lead the Toronto St. Michael's Majors Game 5 OHL Eastern Conference Final Series. Roger Lajoie back with you. First intermission continuing. Delighted to be joined by Chris Curran of the Mississauga Ice Dogs having a great playoff and of course so are all the Ice Dogs as they continue 
this run. Chris, uh, thanks for joining us. First, congratulations, you guys, the resiliency of this hockey club. Unbelievable. Seven game series against Oshawa, seven game series against Barry. And I guess you get the feeling that you know you can't lose when you have so many sudden death games that you win. Yeah, we've uh, become uh, accustomed to uh, playing those seven games and uh, learning how to deal with it. Um, we have uh, a couple of big guys like uh, Shance, who's playing really well. Uh, he's clutch for us right now, just like we've seen in that first period. Uh, just a lot of guys playing together, working hard, and uh, doing what we do best, pretty much. Big, uh, much has been made of the home ice advantage in this series, and whenever the majors are involved, it is, because let's face it, this arena is just a, a little sandbox compared to the nice arenas in Mississauga and in other centers in the OHL. How do you guys deal with that uh, when you come in here and you know the psychological? You haven't won here yet, but you played very well, especially the last game. Uh, I think basically, basically uh, you should have to think quick. You can't, uh, you can't hold on that puck too long. You've got to be moving. You've got to know where your guys are. And uh, when you're in the opposing end, uh, you just got to shoot the puck from anywhere because you never know anything can happen. Just have seen as many times the series so far. Um, so that's pretty much all. Greg Gilbert, I'm sure, making that message clear to you, Chris. And that's one thing about a coach with the experience who's just recently been in the National Hockey League. Every player we've had in from your hockey club has said the same thing. He just commands respect in there. Oh, definitely. Um, he... He preaches everything. We have great systems with uh, Greg, and uh, it, like we can't go wrong with it. Uh, he's pre he's done things all year, and it's been amazing. What's it feel like for you to be a part of this year in Mississauga? What a great run this has been. You know, you were talking off camera about la last year in the league, and you think about uh, everything that's transpired. But boy, this franchise, which struggled mightily for so long, just having a great run. Yeah, I've been dealt with uh, a lot of years, and the uh, first couple of years it was pretty tough, losing a lot of games, coming to the rink knowing you're going to lose. And uh, coming to this year and being uh, a challenger for the first in our conference the whole year, uh, it's really been something special. And uh, to finish it off, uh, hopefully winning this series and uh, going to the finals, it would be something good. There's no doubt, uh, Chris, people of Mississauga have picked up on it too. Attendance has been up this year, which is good. And I guess everything, right from ownership to players like yourself, has improved. And that's got to be encouraging for everyone in the dressing room. It's hard not to feel good coming to the rink when, when you're winning and there's people coming to watch you. Yeah, definitely. I think a big part of our, uh, our uh, winning streaks and uh, this year has got a lot to do with their fans. Uh, they support us greatly. Like They come to the games, the road games. They have uh, fan buses. We've never really had that before. And uh, when we're out there and we have chants like Go Dogs Go and stuff out there. Here's that boost of confidence that gets us going. So. Well, it's really working. You're playing a great series, and congratulations on this regular season and, of course, everything that's been accomplished in the playoffs. And the Ice Dogs, one of the great stories, no matter what happens in this series, uh, in the entire OHL. Continued success to you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Chris Curran of the Mississauga Ice Dogs. All right, let's take a look at that first period scoring summary. Just one goal to tell you about in period number one, and it belongs to Mississauga. Tomislav Zanowski with the big goal, 17-49. Graw, Weiler, and Pinchot getting the assist. 12-9 the shots for the Ice Dogs, and as a result, 1-0 Mississauga. We'll be back with more in a moment. You're watching OHL Primetime Game 5 of the East Final on Rogers Television. East final. Some of the highlights from a very busy first period. The Ice Dogs with a good road period. Lots of hitting and David Chance is always sharp. Look at that skate save he made. 12-9. The shots on goal favoring the Ice Dogs. 1-0 on the scoreboard. Majors took advantage of that power play late in the period to get a few more shots at David Chance but couldn't solve him here and he's got five shutouts in this postseason. So you know that's a concern for the Majors. No doubt about it. Welcome back everybody. Roger Lejoie with you. 1-0 with their thoughts on the period. Let's talk to Dan Dunleavy and Brian Shanahan and, of course, a look at the play of the period and our spotlight players. Guys? Roger, yes, sir. Thank you very much. And we'll start with our spotlight players. And when you take, first of all, a look at the spotlight player for the Mississauga Ice Dogs, there's actually a lot to see in that first period from Lucas Grawweiler. Well, it's great to see. Uh, he was playing a, a great period, but he, he uh, had a big part in that goal. That goal was basically because Grawweiler went hard to the net, and uh, he, center, he centers it using his speed. And uh, Zanowski scores a goal eventually, but Grawweiler played a strong period for them picking up an assist. And as we mentioned off the get-go, he'll work in the corners, he'll dig the puck free for you, and as you mentioned, he really set up that goal for Mississauga, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. As far as Colin Power is concerned, we mentioned that, you know, any points from Colin are really gravy for the St. Mike's Majors. Well, they need a little bit of gravy right now. Yeah, they do, but it looks like they've got his line matched up against the O'Sullivan line, and I think uh, he had a pretty good period. He was gritty. He was always watching O'Sullivan out there, and we saw him messing around in front of the net. He did take a penalty, but uh, he played a tough period, and his job is to make sure that O'Sullivan doesn't get loose 
a goal would be great, though. And he was effective on the face-offs when uh, he had to line up against O'Sullivan. He certainly did win a couple of those draws when called upon after Rorabeck was thrown out of the face-off circle. That's a look at our spotlight players. Time now to take a look at our play of the period. Of course, it's the only goal of the hockey game so far, and the Mississauga Ice Dogs struck first. Well, once again, back to our spotlight player because it's Brawweiler who really makes this happen. That's him going wide. He centers it, and it. I think Justin Peters got a piece of the center just to flex it, and it's a fortunate bounce for the Ice Dogs as it ends on uh, Zanowski's stick, and he just spins around gets that shot away. And you see in front Wilson because of that deflection by Peters. I think Wilson maybe was expecting a chance to clear that puck, and hence it looks like he's out of position. But again, as much as deflections can bother goaltenders, they can also bother defensemen yeah, you're as well. right. It was just a bounce, an unfortunate bounce for St. Mike's. Exactly. Roger Lejoie, this guy can handle bounces all over the place. Let's send it back downstairs. Thanks very much, guys. Well, we'll take a short break. We'll come back and talk more about this first period of play. Ice Dogs with a very good road period. They lead the majors one to nothing. You're watching Game 5 of the OHL Eastern Conference Championship on OHL Primetime on Rogers Television. Nice crowd at Toronto St. Michael's College School Arena. Hey, they're waving the flags for the Ice Dogs. So there's a few Ice Dogs fans in here as well. And there's a happy one. Why not? After one period, it's Ice Dogs 1, Majors no score, Game 5, OHL Eastern Conference Final. Welcome back, everybody. Roger Lejoie with you. Game 5 of the East Final, Game 6 of the West Final going on as we speak. And Majors fans, you'll remember the name Kevin Klein pretty well. Here you see uh, Majors and Ice Dogs tied 2-2 and 1-0 here tonight for the Ice Dogs after one. But after one period in Guelph tonight where they're playing for the Wayne Gretzky Trophy, in fact, they might be awarding it tonight, Kevin Klein, former major defenseman with his ninth goal of the playoffs on the power play in the first period has Guelph ahead of London, 1-0. They are also in the first intermission tonight in Guelph. Guelph leads that series three games to two, so obviously a victory for the Storm there, and they will win the Wayne Gretzky story, and they will set it up. No matter what happens, there is a game six in this series, and it's Sunday night at Mississauga's Hershey Center. StMichaelsMajors.com will have the full audio cast for you. I'll be in Mississauga with the play-by-play -play of that game, so log in at StMichaelsMajors.com for game six. Will the majors be leading three to two or trailing three to two? We'll find out two periods to go. Let's go back upstairs to the play-by-play -play team. Dan Dunleavy and Brian Shanahan. Well, I'll tell you what, if quite often in hockey we get caught up in scripts and things playing out the way that it'd be nice to see for fans and certainly fans in Toronto. Dave Cameron would like nothing better than to meet up with Kevin Klein in the 12th storm in the OHL final rather than the London Knights but they've got to get themselves through this series right now they trail at one nothing and there you get a look at the Ice Dogs fans will be holding their breath Brian for the next 24 seconds yes very important a power play for St. Mike's now it's a five on three as you said for 24 seconds then they'll go to the five on four I think St. Mike's has to get control of that puck and try to kick, cash in on that five on three I know there's not a lot of time for it but there's a lot of room on the ice when you have a five on three. There you get a look at Stokes and Kern in the penalty box for Mississauga. Interesting to see Tim Brenda and Tyler Haskins just a moment ago here on the ice as they get ready for the faceoff, having a conversation. And it's expected that Tim Brent will pass the torch to number 14 of St. Mike's to perhaps be the captain of this hockey club down the road. Right now, Tim Brent will be on the point left side along with Van Belagui. And it's Rorabeck, Vitarelli, and Haskins up front off the faceoff. Vitarelli gets it across the line. They've got to get the puck deep, and they do. It's a Shoeless Show's power play to start the period for St. Mike. Here's Tim Brent. Will he fire it? No, it's a pass for Haskins. This is what they were talking about, setting up. Brent trying to get the puck down low, loose in front. No backhand, and it rolls right to Shanson. He'll cover up, basically just stealing the blocker as Rorabeck and Vitarelli were down low. Well, in this case, I think Brent was just trying to get the shot towards the net it's more of a pass rather than a shot but that pass was so slow that uh, the Mississauga defender got his stick on it and managed to slow it down huge face off now as O'Sullivan leans in against Warbeck Majors win the draw four seconds left in the two man Tim Brent fans on the shot and off the heel of the stick the good news is the stick didn't break and he's still on the ice Quincy on the backhand and Tim Brent off the strange bounce on the boards. He's spinning around and current. Clears it down the ice. Now just a five on four for the majors. One minute remaining. And still, you got to 
think this is one they have to tie this hockey game up. It's fired in by the captain. Quincy gets their first for the Ice Dogs and a lot of room now for Butera. Look up ice and clear it down into the major zone. Van Bellagoo, current. Once on a puck, turned over by the Majors oh, inside oh. their own net. Now returning the favor to Eddie. Tim Brent over the line, rolling puck, takes the shot. Save is made by Chance, and the Ice Dogs clear the zone. Peters out to play it. Just 27 seconds left now in the power play for St. Mike's. Van Bellagoo slowly around his own net. Boyce takes the pass on the left side, skates it over the line, drop for Cameron. Nobody there except Bain for the Ice Dogs, and that's an easy clear. Majors for making a change. Wilson behind his net. Nine seconds left in the power play, and the Majors look like they're ready to concede, and they're just not going to get it done with this man advantage. Wilson trips up in center ice, no call, and it's fired right back into the Toronto zone. Solid job by the special teams of the Mississauga Ice Dogs. Up on nothing on the road, and they killed it. Two-man power play for St. Mike's. Now a loose puck in the slot, bounces out to center ice. Getting there first. Mississauga, Chris Bain up ahead. Jarrett trying to center for Bass. Puck doesn't get there. Jarrett behind the net. Bounces out for Bass along the right wing boards. Cameron there for St. Mike's. Loose puck in the slot taken by Lehman. Boyce takes a hit from Bain. Gets up and watches a puck go by him out to center ice. And Abraham stops at his own blue line. Now a pass up for Jarrett going through the center ice area. Backhanded deep into the Toronto zone. 17-37 remaining in the second period. 1-0 Mississauga. You're watching Game 5 of the Eastern Conference OHL Final. The series tied at 2. O'Sullivan puts himself offside as he saw Rudicella up ahead with some well, that speed. Was probably a good thing for St. Mike's, but he did put himself offside. It was a central ice turnover. And to the wrong guy, that's the one guy in the team you don't want to turn the puck over. It was fortunate that he mishandled it, put himself offside. He's got four goals just in this series alone to lead all scorers. That's Patrick Sull O'Sullivan. Came in number two in OHL playoff scoring. Just trailing by one goal. With nine thus far for Alta. And clear, kept in. There's a shot. Peters to save. Loose puck out front, and he gets the glove on it with Rudicella on the doorstep. Well, that was a, a big save. Not a real hard shot, but with Rudicella in front of the net, Peters had to concentrate on this. I don't know if he bobbles it or not, but if he does, he grabs it quickly. Quick shot off the point. Peters made the save. Kadatsky in the corner. Being watched by Butera, who comes off the point to keep the seat. Now Perry for Peralta. The major standing still a little bit in their own zone here, and good looks up ahead for Kadatsky. Takes the feed, and now a pass cross ice. Up at center ice, Tim Brent too far for him. Brent follows up, and Elliott gets a stick on Tim Brent to take him down. Play continues at center ice for Dale Good, and he fires that one up into the crowd. I mentioned that Patrick O'Sullivan was number two in playoff goal score to this point. O'Sullivan's played 18 games. He has nine goals, and Ryan, Ryan Callahan with the 10 goals in 16 games for the Guelph Storm is your number one goal scorer in these playoffs to this point. Martin St. Pierre with 23 assists to lead the way. Tim Brett of Toronto, number five on that list with 11. Coming into action here tonight. And Belagui behind the net. Vander Beacon. Coggle on the four check for Mississauga, keeping the puck deep. Now McKeever, watched by Pinto. McKeever turns behind his own net. Majors with Vander Beacon on the left wing. Get the puck out to center ice. No possession, though. Draw on the turn. Watched by Rohrbeck. Coggle at his own blue line. Majors offside is Vander Beacon. Pinched in to try to keep that puck deep. Let's go talk with another fan in the stands with Alexis. All right, thanks so much, guys. I'm here with huge Mississauga Ice Dog fan, Ryan. Ryan, you must be happy about this game so far. What's your, what are your thoughts? Well, I think they're playing really well. I'm glad that they're a winner right now. I hope they... Hope they win this one here and take it back home. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Ryan. Let's send it back over to you guys. A lot of people in Mississauga hoping to get it back home up 3-2. They'd be in a pretty good spot in the way this series has gone so far. Zanoski on the left wing boards for Mississauga coming forward. Payne show spins, but it's taken by the majors now. And Abraham, the rookie all-star, second team, gets it into the majors zone. And Bellagoo, veteran, moves it ahead in the state. 
to Vanderbeek and Van Belleguli follows up but can't retain puck possession and back comes the Mississauga Ice Dogs. Zimmerman showing some finesse getting across the line. Firing the puck deep in the Toronto zone but the Majors clear. And Stokes with the momentum carrying it back towards his own blue line. Turns and fires it the length of the ice. No touch icing. 15-36 remaining in the second. 1-0. For the team in black, out of Mississauga in the Hershey Center, and there's their captain, Dan Rudicella. Another overage player from Sarnia, Ontario, only 5'9", 170 pounds. This season he scored 24 goals, 7 assists. He's got 2 assists in this series. Rudicella on the boards, watched by Perry. Everybody overskates the puck that time, and Haskins has it back at his own blue line. Cross ice Lehman, he's Haskins, to gets it up towards Clutterbuck at center ice. It into the Mississauga zone. Haskins giving chase. Bumps with Abraham. Now Vitarelli in the right wing corner. Cycles the puck with Haskins. Haskins looks back to the point. He'll keep it along the boards as Bain was there, ready to check on Lehman. Had the puck gone that direction. O'Sullivan's on the ice for the ice stop. Here's a shot that's high and wide. Perry keeps it into the point. That shot doesn't get through. Rudisella fires it behind his own net. Now Bain. Nice touch around Lehman. And the puck's at center ice where Perry's backed up against O'Sullivan. And Ted Perry takes him up from O'Sullivan. Penalty coming up against Patrick on that play. And again, that might be a bit of a softy against the Ice Dogs. Majors won't complain, though. And now Ted Perry is getting into a bit of a jawing match with Chris Bain there along the boards. I think St. Mike's would be wise just to stay out of any trouble right now and uh, take this power play. And one of their most dangerous penalty killers as well. Not so much his defensive skills, but when O'Sullivan's on the ice killing a penalty, he's always that threat to break a free if there's an errant pass or deflection to get that shorthanded goal. Now Tim Brent wins the faceoff going forward. Peralta carries in, tries to get around. Toggle can't get to the net with the puck. Tim Brent down low, can't get it towards the goalkeeper. Instead, it's fired out the length of the ice and Peters. On the Cubas Joe's power play for the Majors, leaves it behind the net, and Ryan Wilson has started out the Winter Ontario native with eight points in the 2004 playoffs. Gets the puck up to center right for Peralta, then turns it over. Quincy fires the shot. Game is made by Peters. Peralta stays behind his own net. Up to the blue line, two line pass, and that is just not acceptable if you want to win an Eastern Conference championship. Peralta's got to get out of his own zone before he makes that pass to Timmy Brent. Well, we see the power play shooters in the playoffs for St. Mike's. Connor Cameron leading the way. And the Mississauga, no surprise, O'Sullivan has the most. Pretty quiet right now. There's fans here in Toronto waiting for something good to happen to get excited about. Well, I don't know if Miss, uh, or, uh, St. Mike's is trying to go for the home run pass, but they had that offside pass a little earlier, that giveaway to Kyle Quincy. Who's, who's dangerous as a defenseman. He scored 14 goals, so we can put the puck in the net. You don't want to give it away to him. Well, this is Saga, so he's sending one man in on the court check as well. I don't know quite why the Mason are having so much trouble skating out on their own end. Now they get it in the Mississauga zone. Van Bellagui to the middle of the ice. Now Warbeck against the right forwards. Cross ice. Van Bellagui fakes the shot. Tim Brent, left side. Van Bellagui. Center of the ice, back for Brent, coming out of the left wing corner, halfway up the boards, Van Bellagui gets the shot through, that goes off the end boards, Haskins tracks it, Tim Brent's back at the point, the captain holds it, cross ice Van Bellagui, 34 of the power play, Brent, wrist shot, deflects into the corner, Rorabek takes a look back at Van Bellagui, Rorabek now will set up on the point, down low, Tim Brent, feeding into the slot, the pass didn't get there, Rorabek, Van Bellagui, Brent's in the corner, Van Bellagui around Bain, to the faceoff circle, behind the net for the captain, Nobody in front of the net right now for the Majors. Haskins now peels out, but he's in the corner. The Mississauga box is all that stands in front of David Chance. Van Bellagui, left point, cross ice one time. Rorabek, rebound, overskated by Vinrelli. And a chance now to clear. Grawweiler clears the puck, and O'Sullivan's out of the box. And everything going right right now on special teams for the Ice Dogs, at least as far as killing penalties. I, I think you called it right there, though, Dan, when uh, Brent had the puck behind the net as the quarterback trying to set something up. Nobody was cutting towards the net. At the very least, somebody should park himself there to, to cause some traffic to condense that box. But nobody was in front of the net, and nobody was cutting. Yeah, a lot of wide-open space in front of David Chance, and 
We get a look at Joe Rand out of Hamilton, Ontario. He's one of the big bodies for the majors at 6'1", 195. Errol Boyce will take the face off. He goes forward with the draw. Back hands it to the point. 5 Hockey now. There's a deflection in front. And burning with it to go in Cody Bass. Or sound David. And watched by Rand. They dig out of the corner. Cameron there for the majors as well. Rand comes up with it on his backhand. Tripped up, no call. Play continues with Boyce in the left wing corner. Boyce does not have Perry to go to at the point with Jarrett watching him up high. Now on the boards, Boyce fires a shot from a tough angle. And Chance covers up. He got that glove hand arm up there to knock it down. Curran makes a bump in the corner but gets the puck for Abraham. Abraham fires a pass off the skate of Bass and he just gets the puck to center ice. And we do have a whistle on the play and perhaps a penalty coming up to St. Mike's. And you talked about it Kenny, that at some point in time the majors would draw the next penalty call they might want to capitalize on the power play chances well now here's that call well this is the third power play for Mississauga they're 0 for 2 and uh, St. Mike's is 0 for 3 so that was three penalties in a row and that wasn't much of a call either but it was after three penalties in a row to one team you know a pretty good chance the next one is going to the other team so it's St. Mike's turn some extracurriculars happening in front of the players' benches, and now the referee is having a word with both benches. Next time, I'll make the call. And well, the penalties are all even now. Hopefully, the referees can uh, put the whistles away. Because the last two calls were kind of chancy. Well, Tashula shows power play for the Ice Dogs now. Looking to make it 2 nothing here, and really put St. Mike's in a hole. In this game number five. Well, one. Quincy in the slot. Quincy has to go to the boards to retrieve the disc. Ruter at the point, pressured by Power. He's out to try and kill this Mississauga power play. At the point, Ruter. Power knocks Ruter right off the puck. And there's our spotlight player doing the little thing. Shetty is so Sullivan backs up into his own zone. Quincy at center ice. Now McKeever steps up. Andrews doing a good job of keeping Mississauga outside the zone. Drywater takes a hit from Warbeck. And now a chance for Toronto to clear, and they do. And then he fires it down the ice. Change is down for both teams. Tim Brent on the ice watching O'Sullivan. It was a great matchup. A couple of former competitors earlier this year in the World Junior Hockey Championships. O'Sullivan took home the gold. Tim Brent the silver. And wouldn't Tim Brent like to put... Oh, Sullivan out of the OHL playoffs in this series. A little bit of revenge. There's Abraham knocked down behind the Major's net. 47 seconds left in the ice dog. And now play. Stokes, right side, comes off the point. Not enough to get that puck low to Jarrett. It's cleared by McKeever. Now 35 seconds left in the power play. Ice dogs in their own zone. They start it with Stokes. Carries to center, and that one is called on the offside. Although it didn't touch anybody. <laughs> no, I think. I don't I, know. It can't be icing either. I, it was an offside call. I think the referee just presumed that Zanoski touched the puck, but I think he let it go knowing that it was going to be offside. Well, I'm glad you said that because I thought there was a new rule in hockey that I missed <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> the uh, could have been offside rule. Abraham takes a look up ice. Gets away from power. Stokes underneath the stick of Haskins. And across the line, Rudicella can't get the shot away. Time up on power. Do again. An effective job defensively for St. Mike's. And maybe we don't have to say much more about a spotlight player other than he's doing those defensive things right for his team right now. Well, that was actually that was a great play. He just made there. Rudicella was home free. Just a uh, little hook. And another unfortunate call for Mississauga is Haskins tripped over the stick of Stokes. And I'd have to have another look at it from a different angle, but. It just looked like Stokes tried to knock the puck free, and his stick lay there for the Majors player to trip over. He's not arguing it too much going to the penalty box, however. Here's oh, another look at watch it. Watch it here. Oh, no, that's a legit. Yeah, yeah, he just reached his stick out. But uh, that was a good kill for Mississauga, or for uh, St. Mike's, but you're absolutely right about Colin Power. He's quietly having a very strong game defensively. That was a huge play. Buda Sela was in all alone there when he came back to steal that chance. Schulich shows power play for the Majors, but Pinarelli's lost his helmet. He's got to put it on before he can get back into the
of the play, so it's four on four hockey until Vitarelli can get suited up. He's got to get off onto the bench and get another player on as Vitarelli has problems getting that helmet back on correctly. Now Peralta. Up ahead for Cameron. Tips it for Brent. Fires the shot. Loose. What's this? Sometimes it looks so difficult, and sometimes the bounces just go your way. This was just a perfect rebound for Connor Cameron. And good things happen when you shoot. Not a great scoring chance for Brent, not a bad one, but it's the rebound that's caused from there. And Chance can't get over in time. Cameron's got his fifth goal of the playoffs. But a very big one. Peralta picked up an assist. There's another shot by Brent. Well, listen in. I think it was Peralta. Yes, it is Peralta who gets the second assist on that goal. Faceoff will come in the Mississauga zone. 9.02 remaining as you get a look at Butera for the Ice Dogs out of Woodbridge. And he's off to the bench. Actually, he'll get set up now and he'll pick up now Flutterbuck, the rookie out of Welland on the faceoff. Flutterbuck goes to the net. Pitarelli got his stick on it first. Haskins now the major partner, somebody in front of the net. Flutterbuck takes a hit from Butera. Ice Dogs. Steps into his man, creates a turnover. Now the major is starting to pay the price a little bit here, Shani, which is what you've got to do. Vitarelli turns, trying to get it into the slot. But now Curran comes the other way for Mississauga. Nice pass for Jarrett. Underneath Jarrett, going to the net. Saved by Peters. Loose puck. Peters is knocked into the net. The net's off the moorings. And Lehman and Peters. And now here comes the crowd. And the linesman is knocked down. And the net is pushed right against the glass. There is no room for the net to go anywhere else. Peters has a hold of Jarrett. So far, David Chance isn't going anywhere. In the Mississauga net, and still some action behind the play of Putterbuck. His helmet is off, and Elliott oh. gives him a sucker punch, and he's just seen the last of this game, I'll guarantee you, as the referee stood there and watched it. Some fighting going on in the net. And Elliott is being shown the penalty box, not the door. Waterbuck is going to the Majors dressing room. No. Now he's going to the bench. No, I think Waterbuck doesn't know where he is. I think, uh, yeah, you're right. The trainer is directing him off the ice. And on that punch that Elliott threw, his left knuckle on his first finger. The weird number one finger, not the ignorant one, Shannon. <laughs> that index finger, if I got that right, it is swollen below us here well, in the you penalty know, it's box. It's kind of unfortunate because I think it was an innocent play. The rebound comes out. Sure, it's just a yep. player goes current going to the and net. You have to go, that's current going for the re for the rebound, and he gets knocked in the net. Well, it looks like yep. Elliott, number 24, is the one that keeps it going here. Well, so long, and he'll get some help in a moment. Yeah, I think that was uh, of, uh, Cal Clutterbuck. Yeah, Lehman. Oh, Clutterbuck's the first one in. Now Elliott comes in to even it out. So Elliott's doing what he's got to do for his teammate. Yeah, so Jarrett takes the shot. Curran goes for the rebound. Lehman actually knocks him into the net. Now that's innocent right there. Now Lehman is given a couple of shots. You're right. Clutterbuck comes in and Elliott comes in. And obviously Elliott got the last shot of that whole skirmish. And it was a good one. Boy, Elliot's sitting right below us in the penalty box. 6'4", 225. This is a big young man. <laughs> and he's got a knuckle he's tending to as soon as he can with an ice pack, but he may have busted that hand with that punch, and he's still showing it to his teammate Curran in the penalty box as the referee sorts out this melee with 8.34 remaining in a tie hockey game here in the second period at 1-1. The series is tied. And two games apiece. The OHL Eastern Conference Final, and we're also keeping you up to date throughout this game on what's happening in Guelph between the Storm and London Knights. Guelph trying to wrap up that series, leading it three games to two. As you said, 
Elliott's a big guy, six foot four from Orangeville, Ontario. Now he played two years ago. He just played seven games for the Ice Dogs. I'm not sure if he was injured or not, but he's back this season. Let's throw it downstairs to Alexis. Hey, thanks so much, guys. I'm here with Sarah, a big Toronto Majors fan. Sarah, they're just tied it up 1-1. Do you think they're going to take the game tonight? I think so. I guess sometimes all it takes is a power play goal. All right, thanks so much, Sarah. Now, we have some uh, gift certificates to Pizza Pizza for you for being such a great fan in the stands. Let's send it back up to you guys. The discussion continues with the two captains, and still Elliot is trying to get some medical help from one of the paramedics beside the penalty box. He's saying, I need some help with his hand of mine here. Two minutes on the board right now showing for Brandon Elliott. So it looks like he'll escape any kind of his conduct for that punch. The referee figuring the two of them were involved. And that punch was fair game. Well, he's got the extra penalty anyhow. Well, the referee just said number 24. He might be gone. Yeah, he's getting the nod. So it looks like. Brandon Elliott has seen the last of this game, so two-minute likely roughing call. And here he comes out of the penalty box. Brandon Elliott is going to the locker room. And it looks like he's done for the night with 8.34 remaining, unless it's a 10-minute misconduct. Yes, and depending on uh, Actually, what shape what his hand is in, too, he might be done. Well, you see Dave Cameron right there is telling the referee that Clutterbuck was cut over the eye. It's exactly, you could read the, read his lips and his hand direction with the eye. So I, I don't know if he's trying to make sure that Elliot doesn't come back tonight and make sure it's not just a 10 minute. He's pretty upset right now. And here's oh. another look. Let's watch here. Now, now they're both tied up, but it doesn't. Oh, let's see. Oh yeah. Well, there wasn't any fighting going on. It was just tied up with the referee there. The players never expect a punch to be thrown with the with the referee. The linesman maybe. And now, uh, why should it make a difference if he's cut in the eye? Just, just well, the I think he's just trying to say the yeah the, the seriousness of the injury. Here's the call. Two minutes. Goaltender interference and number 24, Brandon Elliott. Two minutes for roughing and a 10-minute misconduct. The St. Mike's Majors, number 11, Scott Lehman, two minutes for roughing, and number 12, Cal Clutterbuck, a 10-minute misconduct. Time of the penalty. So a pair 11, of 10-minute misconduct. That's why Dave Cameron was upset. He wants a game misconduct. What I don't understand is how you get roughing to Lehman for pushing well, Curran into the goaltender, and then you give Curran a interference on the goaltender when he had nowhere to go. No, you're right. Uh, Curran did nothing wrong there. If you want to give both Ruffin for what happened afterwards, but Curran was just going for the net for the rebound. So it's the Majors on a power play, and they can take the lead here. Wilson with Tim Grant on the left boards halfway up. Down to the point, gets the shot. More like a pass looking for Vitarelli. Doesn't get through, and Mississauga clears his own. We get ourselves back to hockey here as Van Belagui has the stick knocked right out of his hands at the Majors bench. And then skating by Van Belagui, Bain gave him a little how do you do. There's a hooking call. That's an easy one to make. The Majors are going to go to the power play again. Vitarelli better stay away from Stokes. He might try to get up here. But the Majors, for the second time in this game, are going up on a two-man power play. I, I think I have to disagree with you on this one, Dan. I think, I think this one was definitely sold to the referee. Let's watch. Tough from that angle to yeah, tell. I thought he got him under the arm. Well, I think he did, but it's says always funny that you get a guy under the arm, but the feet go flying up, <laughs> right? Hey, you haven't seen me skate. <laughs> but if you can draw the penalty, it's a good job for uh, St. Mike's. Now five on three. I really think they have to cash in. The last time they had a shorter five on three, but a full minute here. Rora Beck to take the face off. This is Saga has to put a player in the penalty box and coming over to sit down and serve the penalty is Chad Pancho. Not much room in that sin bin as you see the crowd and off the face off back to the point Tim Brent. Julius Jones power play for the majors deflected wide to the corner. Haskins takes a look for the captain. Tim Brent holds the shot. Haskins at the dot takes the shot. He's puck in front. It's loosened. Dug away by Mississauga. Not cleared. And now Butera comes away with it. 
and gets the puck outside the zone to center ice, and it's dumped into the Mississauga, or rather the Toronto zone. I say Mike's is going to have to be careful in front of Mississauga net. Quincy got knocked down from behind, and it doesn't take much to draw a penalty when you have a two-man advantage. Tim Brent stops at the blue line. Rorbeck is headed off on a change. Now it's four on three for the majors until they get their extra attacker on. Vitarelli putting the mouthpiece in as he comes up. Loose puck off the save is gathered up by the Ice Dogs, but not clear. Vitarelli and Haskins on the board. Tim Brent for Vitarelli. Steps into a shot, misses. Justin Van Belagui. Along the ice, Tim Brent leading in, takes the shot down the block, and here comes the even-up penalty. And you mentioned it, it was only going to take a slight tug by the Majors to even it up. And that's exactly what's happened, or is Mississauga no. drawn a penalty again? I, I think this is Saga has it is. the belly. Yeah, that's, it, it's Quincy for that slash right there. But really... Well, they're, mean, like, they're lucky this isn't a lacrosse game because we'd see a penalty shot right I now. I mean, th that's a slash, but I've seen worse in both directions earlier on in this power play. Well, in that first period, we watched as the referee stood and watched two guys take two handers at each other. And that's right... You said uh, we see worse in a uh, warm-up in a lacrosse game. <laughs> so here we go. And that's Vitter Vitarelli from Peterborough. He's played his share of lacrosse. But, uh, great opportunity for St. Mike's to have to catch it. And Bellagui for Tim Brent. And they can't be patient either. They've got to make it happen now and really close the door on this thing. Brent in the slot takes the shot. It goes off the end boards. Cameron, Van Belagui. Van Belagui cheats it a bit. Tim Brent takes the shot, gets through, loose puck, and it just bounces short side, but not across the line, and it's cleared by the Ice Dogs. Oh, that was close for St. Mike's. Tim Brent in his own zone. 30 seconds remaining in the two-man advantage. Pass for Cameron across the line. Now Rorabek, he's taken to the board. The Ice Dogs clear it out to center ice. The key point in this game is Tim Brent starts it again at center ice. Right wing pass over the line. Peralta offside. And the Majors self-destruct on that play. And now we've got Curran, Lehman, and Payne Show all coming out of the penalty box. 18 seconds remaining in the two-man advantage. See the puck just dribbled by the net there. And this is a chance that Miss uh, St. Mike's has to cash in on because you know the next few penalties are going against them. There's no doubt they've got a few breaks here. Face off near center ice. Wilson, left side, right side pass, Lehman. Lehman carries across the line. Three on two, Vitarelli, his shot deflected. And it rolls weak against the end board. Back to the point. Wilson for Lehman. Lehman, nice looking for Boyce down low. And the tip was there, but a nice read by the Ice Dogs. That's a great read by Kometi to get a stick out in front of that one. Oh, Haskins for Wilson. Wilson off a skate. It will go off the boards. Haskins settles it down. It's back to a five on four now for St. Mike. Shot does it get through. brownweiler has got some speed. And Wilson's got to watch out. Now leaving at center ice. That goes off a stick. Boyce has to knock it out of midair. And the whistle is blown. And a glove pass called against St. Mike's. 5.17 remaining in the second. We're tied at 1. 43 seconds left in the Shoeless Joe's power play marathon. That belongs to the St. Mike's Majors, but they have nothing to show for. Yeah, the 5-on-3, they, they really have been ineffective on the 5-on-3 today. You've got to make teams pay 5-on-3. Comes into the Toronto zone by Bain and Bash will keep an eye on Van Belagui, Good and Tim Brent. The three majors who start the breakout. Brent takes the pass on the right wing up through. He fires it in. Off the board, Peralta there first for Toronto. Puck gets a little bit too far ahead of him. Abraham on it. Back to the point. Good. He settles it down. Working the left boards with the captain. Cross ice Van Belagui gets the shot away, but that's an easy save for a goaltender of David Shantz's caliber, and he'll hold it with 14 seconds left in the power play. And you're right, it's easy because there was nobody in front of the net. That's where you have to have a little bit more patience, delay a, a few seconds, wait for somebody to go to the net, and, and you have to get the traffic in there. You can't just shoot those wrist shots at the net with no traffic. Rorabek and O'Sullivan again, face off to the left of Chance. Rorabek. Hauled out of there again, now it's power. And power for Rorabek into the corner. Next to look out front, opts for the point. Van Belagui, eight seconds left on the power play. Rorabek fires a shot, loose puck in front. This is Saga doing a good job defensively, keeping bodies in front of David Chance. And the penalty is over, and you hear the applause from the Ice Dogs fans. And the Majors 
Did they let an opportunity elude them as McKeever takes a hit behind the play and a whistle on the play will stop progress for the majors and we'll have a face off on the Toronto side of center. Actually, they're going to bring it all the way into the Toronto zone. No, it'll still be on the Mississauga Toronto side of center. It's the referee calling Dan Rudicello over for a chat. Laura Beck will listen in as we get a look at head coach Greg Gilbert. Greg Gilbert has to be happy with his penalty killing. That could be a big momentum left for Mississauga. Laura Beck again against O'Sullivan. Laura Beck wins the actual faceoff. Ties up O'Sullivan. Doesn't let him get to the puck. And Van Belagoo turns in his own corner. Now up the boards for Vander Beacon. The Wallaceburg, Ontario native. Can't catch up to it. It's fired right back into the Toronto zone by Danny Rudicello. Knowles on it first. And Cavetti had to hop over Knowles on the left wing board. Left in by the Ice Dogs. Bouncing puck to the blue line. Now down to the corner. O'Sullivan center for Rudicello. He misses short side. Wraparound attempt. And Peters covers up. And Van Belagoo, he throws one at Knowles. Dustin's definitely going to go for one. Did Knowles bring himself for all he's going to if he keeps this up. Uh, I think Knowles is going to get one too, but if he just backs away, there's no question that Ben Balagui was getting the original, and I think he was the only one originally called. We'll see if Knowles did enough to warrant a penalty as well. Well, Knowles certainly did enough because he's going to the box. The question is how many penalties were called in the play. I think Dustin will just get the one. Well, you never know if the official has an opportunity, as you say, to even up things a little bit here. Maybe there's a four-minute roughing penalty in the opting. We'll find out. Let's see if we can't listen in. Well, Ben Balagui gets the late shot here. Nothing's done. No. No. Right in the crowd here, Van Balagui gives it. There we go. He gets that shot, and then Knowles comes back at, at him. I think if you're Mississauga, you have to know that the referee is looking to make a call against St. Mike's and, and I think he just discipline. Has. And I think that's what he did. There's only two minutes on the board showing for Dustin Van Belagui out of Marillo, Ontario. And the faceoff will be in the Toronto zone with 3.53 to go in a tie game at one apiece here in the second period. And the penalty box door remains open for St. Mike's. I don't know if they're being told to send another player to the box. Well, Van Belagui must have got the extra run. You get the pair of number 27s in the penalty box. And it is Connor Cameron coming over to serve the extra deuce. Faceoff will be in the major zone. Sullivan against Tim Brent on this draw. Shoeless shows power play now for the Ice Dogs. And can they take advantage on special teams? Neither team, as we've talked about at length tonight, have been that great on the power play in this series. Now Butera skates behind his own net. As soon as we get a chance here, we'll visit with Roger Lejoie and find out what's coming up in the second intermission. The Ice Dogs only stop the play. They want to score a goal as they fire it into the major zone. Peters now with a good stick. Can't clear it. Payne up near the point. Butera against Power. And McKeever gets that puck out across the line to center ice. Quincy being watched by Power. Tim Brent up there on the forecheck as well for the Majors. As they keep an eye on the Ice Dogs and try not to give them any momentum across center ice. Successful job by Toronto on that rush up ice. Now O'Sullivan has to backhand it across the line. He takes a bump from McKeever. McKeever out of the puck and he clears it the length of the ice with one minute and nine seconds remaining in the power play for the Ice Dogs. Three minutes even remaining here in the second period of the fifth game of the OHL Eastern Conference Final on Rogers Television. Dan Dunleavy, Brian Shanahan, Roger Lejoie, and Alexis Shook with you from St. Michael's College School Arena. Zanowski on the right wing across the line, takes the shot, pad save, deflected to the corner. Jared gets there, but he can't keep puck possession. Stokes keeps it into the point. Ted Perry for the majors, tying up Jared. Now Abraham. This is Saga working the puck around nicely. Finally, O'Sullivan through the legs. Sadowski back to O'Sullivan on the board. Shot knocked down by Lehman Skate. And it rolls out to center ice. Under 30 seconds remaining in this power play for the Ice Dogs as they have to set up behind their own net. Stokes will take a look. 
see what lies ahead on this rush. Everything opens up straight up the middle. Rudicello is there, but they can't get in the puck. And now Haskins the other way. He's on his own, though. Haskins on the left wing. And he gets the puck deep enough. And there's only five seconds remaining in the power play now. And under two minutes remaining in the period. So the St. Mike Majors have successfully killed off this Mississauga power play as Connor Cameron is back onto the ice. Majors turned the puck over in their own zone. Back to the point. Abraham gets the shot through, and that one almost deflected. But Peters again got a pad on it. It bounces to the corner for Jarrett. Zanoski behind the net. Watched by Haskins. Zanoski comes halfway up the boards with it. Now forced back to the point. Tim Brent there, and he just backhands it across the line. Off the linesman's leg. And still in front of the Mississauga bench, McKeever steps into Jarrett. Jarrett gives him an extra shot from behind. Referee watching the whole thing with things are allowed to continue as they are. And the Majors making a change. Here's a chance for Payne Show. Feathering a pass inside and Boyce knocked that one down. And boy, if the hand-eye coordination was going to work at a particular time, it was pretty good timing for Daryl Boyce. The Majors got caught on the line change. And now with under one minute remaining here in the second period. will get us going in the second intermission and we'll let you know what's coming up here in this second break of this hockey game. And there's a look, an interview with Dustin Van Belagui. We'll have a scoring summary, our top shelf drill from the hockey school and around the O as well as we talk about what's been developing in these Ontario Hockey League playoffs and also the Rookie of the Year handed out today that award in the OHL there's Curran short side trying to jam one in centered in front backhand no shot back can't get a stick on it puck still loose right in front of Peters now it's steered to the corner under a minute to play here in the second period and the puck is frozen in the corner for a face off and Boyce working against Curran along the boards the referee was a little bit slow with that whistle and this is what he did Dan, we have four teams left in the OHL playoffs. St. Mike's and Mississauga, and London and Guelph, and uh, it's the, the four teams with the best four records this season, so it's pretty fitting. I, I guess St. Mike's is hoping it continues and they had a better record than Mississauga in the regular season. Not by much. No. Nope. You mentioned just that single point. It was a real part of the fun dogfight for the entire season. <laughs> Didn't even try on the partner. It just kind of happened that way as icing is called against the majors. And this could be a big icing call with the 29 seconds remaining here in the second period. Dave Cameron takes a look up ice. And no doubt he'll have Tim Brent take this face off against Patrick O'Sullivan. Well, not a lot of goals scored in this series. Nine for Mississauga, eight for St. Mike. So you got to think the next one might be the last one of the game. So very important. Connor Cameron, after Tim Brent is waved out of the circle, takes the draw. Dale good behind his own net. Gets the puck up on the boards. Not out, though. Abraham keeps it in. Bouncing puck in front. Peters makes a save on Jarrett. Right on the doorstep, but good was there. For St. Mike's defensively. Now along the right wing boards. Almost everybody on the ice is in that two-foot radius. And look out, Peralta takes a hit from O'Sullivan at the partition between the two benches. Peralta bounces right back up, and then McKeever tried to give O'Sullivan an extra shot just at the whistle as they fought for the puck. And now Dale Good and Knowles behind the play. Knowles wants to go with Good. I'll tell you what, Daryl Knowles, the uh, former St. Mike's major, he's certainly game for this series, but he's got to be careful. He doesn't get himself goaded into a situation that he's taken right out of this hockey game. I think the major sense that if you... Give number 27 that extra shot. You might be able to take him off the ice. Oh, you're right. He's got to show his composure at this point in the game. You definitely don't want to go take a penalty on your own. And there might be penalty calls as the referee is at the timekeeper's bench. And Tim Brent and Patrick O'Sullivan look on as Dave Cameron, Bob Jones, and the Majors make their way to the room. Tied at one after two here on Rogers Television. St. Mike's and they're enjoying the action and the fans in the stands certainly enjoying the action when the big guys play. 1-1 Ice Dogs and Majors after 40 minutes of play at Toronto St. Michael's College School Arena. Welcome back everybody. Roger Lajoie. Second intermission continues 
here at St. Mike's. Well, pretty good hockey game going on. The Majors trailed 1-0 after 1, but they got a power play goal to tie it up at 1-1, and that's where we stand after 40 minutes. Guelph leading London 1-0 in the Western Conference Final as we speak. We'll keep an eye on that board as well. A little later in this intermission, of course, we'll check in on the scoring highlights and all our usual features. But right now, before the game, our own John Abbott had an opportunity to talk to a very important member of this Majors team. That's Dustin Van Balagui. Here's John's conversation with Dustin before the game. I'm here with Majors defenseman Dustin Van Balagui. Dustin, I had the pleasure of interviewing you earlier on in the season. How do you feel you've helped your team since being traded to Toronto? Well, I think, uh, you know, the biggest thing, I think, is uh, the stability on the defense. You know, me, I think I, you know, I log a lot of ice time. I'm, I can do, uh, you know, specialty teams, penalty kill, power play, you know, whatever, whatever they ask me to, I think I can do. And, uh, you know, the experience helps, too. A big reason you were involved in that trade is to replace defenseman Kevin Klein now with the Guelph Storm. In the playoffs, you're both in the same round now. Guelph is facing London, and you're facing Mississauga. Do you consider that a job well done? Well, you can say yeah, and you can say no. I, you know, I didn't. I don't really think about it that way. You know, it's just you know he left and I came. You know, we didn't get traded for each other, but I, I realized I had to fill some kind of spot. So you know, if you know people like to think about it that way, that's great. You know, I'm I'm glad to hear that. You are a very aggressive defenseman. You have 30 penalty minutes, but you also have seven playoff points. Uh, how do you can how do you focus on that? Well, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I like to play strong in my own zone. You know, I don't, you know, I don't like taking lots of penalties, but you still got to be strong in front of the net and stuff. You know, do your job, keep guys away from the goalie, and you know, the offensive part just comes. You know, I, I played forward for, for a few years when I was younger, and uh, I think that just that helps a lot. I know you're good friends with Ted Perry. We had him on last week in the in the broadcast. Now, can you explain this playoff thing you've got going with your hair? I'm trying to grow my beard here, but. Well, you know, I didn't put a lot of thought into it. Yeah, me and Ted live together, and we watch a lot of TV, and we've seen, you know, we see some pretty crazy stuff. And uh, I seen the guy, uh, well, Mr. T, actually, the first time, was uh, he had a mohawk, so I, I figured I'd do it. And other than that, you know, it's not a lot of thought goes into it. <laughs> this is the farthest you've got in the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. Are you excited to be here, and what do you think your team has to do to progress from this round? Well, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I haven't been past the first round with my other teams, but, uh, you know, we're game five of the conference finals. It's um, you know, it's just keep it simple and keep the uh, intensity up and just do simple things right, and we'll get past this. Speaking of playing in the playoffs, you are playing for your, your career. This is your overage year, so once you're done, this is it for you of your OHL career. Do you have any plans for the future? Well, I don't. I just want to kind of wait and see you know, what, what options I have. But I just right now, I just want to finish off my career in a good note. Finally, Dustin, what has Dave Cameron done to you for these playoffs? Has he sat you down and gave you a good mindset? And I know this is the fourth year in a row that the majors have been this far, but uh, has he focused on anything sp specifically with the defensemen? Well, he, you know, not, not individually. He just lets the defensemen know what we have to do, you know, and we know as well. We, but he just he won't let us forget it. And, uh, you know, he just, he just wants us to uh, get past this, you know, conference final, get to the OHL finals. It's, you know, the fourth year, it's, he kind of wants to get farther than the, the other years. And, you know, we can understand that, and we want to as well. Thank you for spending time with us today, Dustin. Thanks very much, John. Fine interview with Dustin Van Balagui. And what a key member he is of this club. There's no question about it. Dustin Van Balagui is going to be counted on to take the majors into that OHL final instead of stalling in the East final, which they've done the last couple of years. We'll see what happens. 1-1. Our second intermission continues here. Game 5, Ice Dogs and the majors. Time for a regular feature here on Rogers. It's the top shelf drill. John Olson this week talks to us about covering the crease. Hi, I'm Mark Kennedy, head goaltending instructor for Olson Hockey Club. The two net goalie drill you're about to see today is a drill that focuses on making sure the goalies are always set, always ready, and keeping their feet moving. You never know where a shot's going to come from or when it's going to come at you, so you always have to be ready. A couple key moves for moving across the crease as well are sliding in your butterfly, staying up, and making sure that your sticking gloves are always in the right position. Let's show you the sliding butterfly. The sliding butterfly is one of the key saves now in goaltending. What you want to make sure you do is you want to cover the most net possible while still maintaining a solid butterfly stance. The most important thing you're going to have to do is turn your hips square to the shooter. The first thing I'm going to do before I slide in my butterfly is I have to change the angle of my body before commencing my push. So again, I'm here, I turn and slide across. 
Always trying to maintain square hip and shoulder placement to the shooter. Again, straight back, slide across, regaining my feet at the end of the slide so that I'm back in position, ready for a rebound or another shot. In this drill, we have the shooter just coming in and the goalies have to be on their feet, paying attention quickly to the shooter at all times because he can either do a wraparound, he can take a forehand, a backhand shot, he can shoot on any goalie at any time. Now the penalty here is, if the goalie happens to get scored on, what he has to do is two down and ups. So in this instance, Josh will have to go one, two, now the shooter gets another puck and continues the drill. And the idea here is for the goalies always to be quick on their feet, have good balance, making sure they can go post to post well. Now Josh is going to have to do two down and ups again, and the shooting drill will continue. It's an excellent drill for the goaltenders to always be paying attention and using their stick, using their feet, keeping their balance, and it's also a very good conditioning drill for the shooter because he has to be in continual motion, and that goes the same for the goalies as well. Another variation to this two-goalie drill is to have two shooters involved. Gordy's going to come in, take a shot. Now Matthew will come in and take a shot. All right, there we are, the top shelf drill once again. Here's a second period scoring summary. Connor Cameron on the power play. Brenton Peralta on the assist at 10.40. Lone goal of the period, 13-7 the shots for Toronto. 22-19 majors after 40 minutes. Back with more in a moment. You're watching OHL Primetime on Rock. There you have it, second period, the lone goal, Connor Cameron on the power play, Brenton Peralta, 10.40 the time of that one, 13-7, the shots, majors over the Ice Dogs, 22-19 Toronto after 40 minutes, and that pretty well says all there is to say about this one, a very tension-filled hockey game, game five, East Final, 1-1 the score, 2-2 in this best of seven series. Welcome back, everybody. Roger Lajoie, second intermission continues. Well, we've got to take a look, of course, at our spotlight players, how they're doing, and our play of the period. So we go right back upstairs to our play-by-play -play team. Here's Dan Dunleavy and Brian Shanahan. Gentlemen. Roger. Colin Power, Lucas Grawweiler are two spotlight players, and we'll start with Lucas Grawweiler for the Mississauga Ice Dogs. And I think we saw it in the second period pretty much what you see from him night in, night out. Digging for the puck, trying to get it free for the forwards to finish the job. Yeah, and, and what happened in that period, too, is that Mississauga spent a lot of time killing penalties, so they weren't able to generate uh, a lot of attack, but Grawweiler was digging hard, as you said, and in the corners, but they didn't really get to generate a lot of offense because of the penalty situations. As far as the St. Mike's majors are concerned, and when we look at Colin Power, we talked about it during the second period. We saw number 13 do the little things right, in special team situations whether it was killing a penalty or of course just getting the puck out of his own zone up to the forward so they could get onto the attack as far as their power play was concerned but more so pretty impressed with his play defense uh, you know i'm very impressed in fact when it was one nothing for mississauga rudisela had a great scoring opportunity and colin power got back just in time to hook him to take away the scoring opportunity shortly after that Mrs. Uh, St. Mike scored a goal to make it 1-1. That's a key point in this game so far. So even though he hasn't put anything up on the scoreboard, he has been a, a key component of this game so far for St. Mike's. Well, Brian, as you just mentioned, of course, this is a 1-1 hockey game, and we didn't come into the second period with that score on the board. So that leaves us one guess as to what our play of the period is. And here it is right now. It's the St. Mike's Majors tying up this game at one apiece. Well, well even though they haven't been effective on the power play, this is actually a... a, a a rush play it's not a setup power play but brent takes the shot and as you say shoot at the net good things happen and the rebound came out to cameron who gets his fifth goal of the playoffs fourth power play goal of the playoffs second in power play goals and he's at the right spot at the right time take a shot at the net and go to the net good things happen tough spot as a defenseman there with that rebound coming out as well you're backing up to cover the forward who's on the attack coming in you tie him up too early you draw an interference penalty mm -hmm. perhaps but the best thing you can do is just try to knock his stick down, not let that shot get through. That was not the case for the Mississauga defenseman at that point in time. That's a look at our spotlight players in the play of the period. Now as we continue with the second intermission, let's hand the reins over once again to Roger Lejoie. And guys, thank you very much. We'll be right back up to you in a few moments for Around the O. want to let everybody know, first of all, though, that uh, St. Michael's Majors Hockey is available at the Majors' official website. An audio cast of all games, home and away. And the next game in this series 
is Sunday, and we'll have it for you at stmichaelsmajors.com. I'll be at the Hershey Center for all the play-by-play -play action, so be sure to check that out Sunday night, Game 6 at 8 o'clock, and obviously after that, we'll pick up on where the series goes from there. Other series going on, we're going to talk about that on Around the O, of course. Guelph and London, what a dandy they got going in Game 6, guys. 2-1, to one, Guelph leading London early in the third period. Guelph leading the series three games to two. And you know what? You try to analyze it all you want. Brian, I think you said it best during the game. The top four teams in the regular season are here playing in the playoffs, and it goes back and forth every night. This is some great hockey we're watching. And some people might consider it an upset, too, if Guelph wins that. But uh, to forget, even though London was the number one ranked team in the country, Guelph was just behind them a few points, fourth overall in the country, but just about five or six points behind London. Yeah, that's the one team that everybody figured if London wasn't going to steamroll through the OHL and get to the Memorial Cup, it might be Guelph, the one team that could either take enough out of them for the Eastern Conference team that gets through or be the team that goes through eventually and wins the OHL championship. But you've got to know, I mean, these players right now obviously have no idea what's going on in that game tonight, but they do know Guelph has a chance to win it tonight. And obviously, if London were to be knocked out of these playoffs, the Eastern Conference clubs, these two teams, Mississauga and Toronto, know that maybe the crack in the door, Guelph's a very good hockey team, as you mentioned, but the crack in the door gets a little bit wider if the Guelph Storm should win the Western Conference. That's no disrespect to Guelph. They would still be, obviously, Roger, the favorite in the OHL championship. I was going to say that, Dan, because, Brian, you're right. They were just seven points apart. London had 110. That's an all-time record in the OHL. Guelph had 103. That's a pretty quality opponent for the Eastern finalists, whoever they're going to play. But you are right. I think there'll be a little glimmer more of optimism if London does go down. However, it's only 2-1 early in the third period. Guys, it is amazing, you know, when you talk about this, and quickly before we get back, um, you, you look at Guelph and London taking a lot out of each other. But if the series ends tonight, these guys could wind up playing the winner of this series Sunday night and Monday night, and then have to maybe start a series Thursday or Friday next week. I think it's crucial for the winner of this series to get it over in six games. I'll leave it for you, partner. Yeah, although right now, um, if you're St. Mike's, you, you, you're, you're not thinking about getting it over in six games. You're just thinking about getting that win now and forgetting about whether it's six or whether it's seven or who you're going to face next because they're fighting for their lives. Both teams are. And I think a little bit less pressure on Mississauga as well because they know how well they've been at home. All right, guys, thanks very much, and the teams will be out in just a few moments, and we'll be back upstairs, of course, for play-by-play -play of period number three. Gentlemen, thanks, and we look forward to the third period of this one. Look forward to the rest of the OHL playoffs, and we talked about the importance of this series and winning it, of course, and Brian's absolutely right. Nobody wants to go ahead and not win this series in six or seven games, but first thing, you have to win this series, and the majors have just two games left to get it done and tell you right now the Ice Dogs have a little bit of momentum. It's 1-1. We'll take a short break and we'll come back with the start of period number three. 1-1, game five, OHL East final. You're watching OHL Primetime Playoff Edition here on Rogers Television. Lots of blue and white in the stands at Toronto St. Michael's College School Arena. Those pom-poms going to get busy in the third period because the majors need the support of this hometown crowd, that's for sure. Ice Dogs with another very good road game. 1-1, game five, it's time for period number three. Can't wait for it. Let's get upstairs with the play-by-play. -play. Here's our team, Dan Dunleavy and Brian Shanahan. Gentlemen. Roger, we last left you with the referee making uh, some more penalty calls at the end of that period, and it turns out that they are even up calls as far as Dale Good for the St. Mike's Majors and Daryl Knowles for the Ice Dogs, both two-minute roughing calls at the 20-minute mark of period number two. So we'll have... It looks like Clutterbuck and uh, Brandon Elliott are back in the penalty box, so they must both be all right. Well, of course, Clutterbuck was uh, the one that there would have been a little more concern over after taking that punch over the eye, as Dave Cameron alluded to. But four on four hockey to start. And the Ice Dogs with Pacho carried across the line. He's held up by McKeever. McKeever hits him against the end board. Will the Majors prevail tonight and take a 3-2 series lead to Mississauga on the weekend? Or will the Ice Dogs have a chance to close out the series over the weekend at home as the puck is tipped across the line by Abraham. Abraham working down low against Peralta. A minute and a half remaining in the 
this four-on-four -four situation for Ralta. Can't kick the puck over. Now he does, but Stokes steps in off the point to keep the puck in the major zone. And now Wilson, the defenseman for Toronto, skates out the center ice. Nice move around O'Sullivan. Wilson gets his shot. Scores! That was magic! Two on St. Mike's early in the third. Where did he come up with that move? You called it. The only reason Wilson was on the ice there as a defenseman, they actually had three defensemen on the ice. He was covering O'Sullivan, and O'Sullivan's the man who he eventually beats in the one-on-one. -on -one. Nice move, and it looks like O'Sullivan recovers, but he still manages to get that shot away. Oh my goodness. Just when you thought you've seen it all, a pretty much end-to-end -end rush by Ryan Wilson out of Windsor, Ontario in the St. Mike's Majors. Ryan Wilson was playing some man-to-man -man coverage on Patrick O'Sullivan in his end. Here they come again across the line. Boyce and Haskins as they take the puck to the corner. Quincy ties up Haskins. No holding call shot from the point. Goes up over the top of David Shant. Settles in the right hand corner in the Mississauga zone. Zanowski with speed to his own blue line and up the center ice and he carries it across the line. A little hip check thrown by Daryl Boyce, but Zanowski does get the puck deep. Rawweiler pushed off the puck and now the Majors come the other way. Pantelicu is on his own right side across the line and shot goes off the glass. He bumps with Quincy. Well, after that goal scored by Wilson, the puck will short side out in front of Rawweiler scores, but a quick whistle by the official who was on the offside to make that call had no idea if the puck was loose. Oh, you're right. There's no question that the whistle was blown, but the question is why was it blown? We'll probably be able to see from this angle if the puck is covered. No way was that covered. I mean, we were a little bit behind on that as well as far as our view, but that puck jumped out so quick, Brian, I don't know. It remains 2-1. 13 seconds remain in this four on four. The Majors with Rora back out front waiting for that puck. Power working it down low behind the red line. Power in the right wing corner now. Comes up to the face off. Down. Nice pass. McKeever shoots. Rebound. Power doesn't get his stick on it, but he's got it now in the corner. Wilson in the slot, and that's just tipped away by Bain for the Ice Dogs. Majors picking up a little bit. London and Wells now tied at two in their playoff game that's happening this evening. Of course, we'll try to wrap that one up. Leading 3-2 in the series. Now Bain at center ice. Pass ahead. Jared across the line. Nice move. Jared scores! Oh, magic for magic! As these two teams go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, tied at two! Oh, and this is a beautiful goal as well. Blair Jarrett from Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. What a move! And then he puts one on Justin Peters as well goes to the backhand. But watch this first move. That's the finish. He goes to the backhand. That's his fourth goal of the playoffs. Go along with seven assists. Scored 18 goals in the regular season. I doubt many were bigger than that one there. Boy, are we seeing some individual efforts here in this third period. And two goaltenders who are bound for the National Hockey League draft this summer. Pete Erling off the faceoff. Vitarelli across the line. He bumped off the puck. Nice job by Quincy. This is like a heavyweight fight. Punch for punch. They're matching each other throughout the series. Haskins hits his hand along the inboards. Clutterbuck now in to free the puck. Coggle gets some extra shot. Clutterbuck still pinned along the boards. Coggle has the puck right onto his stick from Haskins. And now it's center ice, the Majors. Vitarelli tips it across the line. Changes down for Toronto with Haskins and Clutterbuck go off. Penalty coming up on the play. And it looks like this one will be against the St. Mike's Majors. And Corey Vitarelli is going to the penalty box. Let's watch. Now, I don't know if he got the little hook on there, but... Mississauga's power play... Has really put on no pressure so far, but we don't want to keep giving them chances. Tim Brent at 
Patrick O'Sullivan is behind the play. Peralta and Grauweiler have a real pushing and shoving match going, so they're going to put him in and take the face off. <laughs> Why not? You guys want to go at it with your sticks? Well, then see who can win the draw. Puck is cleared down the ice on the Shield of Shield power play for the Ice Dogs by Captain Tim Brent. And he's out there with Peralta on the board check. McKeever and Dale good on the backhand for Toronto is Abraham. Brings it across center ice and just feathers one into the corner. Dale good now behind his own net. On the backhand, switches it to the forehand. A little slow in clearing the puck. It is kept in. Oh, Sullivan. Centering pass goes back to the point. Abraham fires a shot. Grawweiler behind the red line. Bain for Grawweiler. Peters tries to clear it. It goes up with Dale Good. Kept in the zone. McKeever gets a stick on Bain, but it's back to the point. Now Stokes for O'Sullivan. Backhand. Grawweiler short side. Sets up behind the net. O'Sullivan pinching it, and he fires one save by Peters. It comes back to the point where Stokes sets it up for O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan for Grawweiler. He kicks at it. And the Majors will clear with one minute and two seconds remaining in the power play for the Ice Dogs. Majors probably had about three good chances to clear before that time, and they kept fanning on it or getting the bad shots away. And Quincy at center ice. Quincy to the Toronto line, right wing around Rorbeck. Look out there comes Lehman, and he's been full of hits in this series here in Toronto as the puck is cleared out to center ice. Blows now Rudicella and Power getting involved. 41 seconds remaining in the penalty to Vitarelli. Elliott is back onto the ice. His misconduct is over. And the referee is over at the penalty box. Let's we'll listen in. Uh, Mississauga penalty coming up. You know, I think they might have got called for too many men on the ice. And the goal scorer, Jarrett. Here's the one that will go to the penalty box and serve the minor. Now, the only thing I can guess is when Quincy broke his stick and headed to the bench, I think somebody stepped on the ice before he got close to the bench. Too many men exactly right. Brian Shanahan behind the next Quincy. Holds it for Mississauga, so we're playing again. Here in the third period, some four-on-four four hockey. Lehman, short Whoa. side, almost scored on his own cold tender. Peters, as that puck went off the side of the net. Back to the point, Peters covers up, loose puck. And the majors are there, Van Belagu. He pass ahead for Boyce. He's got Haskins on the left side, over the line, right wing. Cuts to the backhand, can't seal that puck quite enough. Goes down awkwardly behind the net. Trying to free himself, though, as the puck is cycled into the corner. Quincy has a hold of the stick, no call. And the Ice Dog can't clear. Lehman gets the shot deflected into the corner off the heel of the stick of Dustin Van Belegui. Now Boyce is being held again. He can't even get to his stick in front of the net. Now he picks it up as play continues in the corner. Haskins trying to get that puck in front. Boyce is still there. Now for Van Belegui. Cross ice. Lehman settles it down. Haskins takes the shot and just missed. I think Chad's got the blocker on it just enough to steer it to the corner. Vitarelli working in the right wing corner down low. Puck goes off the glass. Lehman settles it down at the point. Still a rolling puck now for Vitarelli. 42 seconds left in the shoe. It shows power play for the Majors. Vitarelli at the dot. Give and go. Vitarelli takes the shot. Saved by Jens. And he holds. And now the whistle goes. And after a quick whistle moments ago for a puck that appeared to be loose, the referee took his time and chances and had me on that call. Somebody's in the net. I think it might be Quincy. Boy, I can't blame Chance for being upset at that one. He clearly had that puck covered oh, up. This is a nice give and go. Vitarelli to the corner, right back. And Look at Lehman oh, creeping down. That? Chance makes the save and it slips in behind him. Yeah, Quincy gets knocked into the net there. 34 seconds remain in this power play. You get a look at David Chance from the all-rookie team in the Ontario Hockey League is named today. And Peralta trying to walk in front. Puck was off his stick and cleared the length of the ice for the Ice Dogs. Peters out to play it with now just 20 seconds left in this power play. Who knows what penalties will be called down the stretch here, but you hate to have this game decided on a cheapie. Puck is clear. Oh, oh, damn it. It's going. It looks like you get that penalty feeling. doesn't make a difference. Neither team has been effective on the power play. Of course, St. Mike's one goal was on a power play, but it really wasn't a power play type goal. 
Rolling puck down on Chance. Let's go to our fan of the stands with Alexis Shook. All right, thanks so much, guys. I'm here with Greg and his friends. Guys, did you plan this, being right above the Mississauga penalty box? Oh, yeah, they love it. <laughs> <laughs> these guys have been making so much noise during the whole game. So we have four passes to the Hockey Hall of Fame for these guys. Right, thanks thank so much. You. Thank okay, you. back to you guys. Uh, is she safe sitting there? I wonder. I think she's protected anyway. <laughs> Rora Beck will take the face off for St. Mike's against Bass. And Cody lets the puck go behind the red line. Abraham and Vanderveek in a pair of fours. Behind the Mississauga net. Power play is over for St. Mike's. Trying to keep the puck deep in the zone. Here they go again, Vanderbeek and Abraham. Power and Bass hovering for the loose puck. Rora back there for Toronto as well. Now it's Bass and Power. Vanderbeek and Abraham. And just Rora Beck waiting there. So turnover behind the net. Rora Beck going to the front of the net. Loose puck. Good at the point. Can't get the shot through. Here comes Mississauga. Potential three on two. Curran over the line, right side. Stokes coming in as well. Shot doesn't get through, and a chance for the Majors. Potential two on one, but they can't get to the puck. Cometti is back for the ice dog. Stokes takes the cross ice speed on the left side, gets it across the Toronto line, but not deep. Now it's center power. Has it knocked off his stick, and Dale Good picks it up. Tries to carry to center. And Dale Good turns the puck over. And Bain, he's taken out of the play by power, and now good with the backhand. Can't clear. Payne show and Peters. Peters gets there first. Vinarelli on the left wing side. Gets the puck up to center ice. Vinarelli takes a shot from Payne Show, but carries the puck across the line. Now Haskins in to help out, but he's late on the play. So McKeever has to back it up for Van Bellagui in his own zone. 12 minutes and 10 seconds remaining. Third period tied at two. Game five, OHL Eastern Conference Final tied at two. You couldn't ask for anything more. Intention in this series. As these two teams go toe-to-toe, -to -toe. Bain can't get the puck any farther than center ice for Van Bellagu. He gathers it up, and he just dumps it right in. It's right on chance. A lucky bounce for the majors, and a faceoff will come in the Mississauga zone with 11.47 to go in the third. Look at number 14 for the majors, Tyler Haskins from Madison, Ohio. He'll make his way to the bench for Peralta, Brent, and Kadatsky. Being his first ice time in this series off the faceoff. This is Saga Butera knocks it down with the boot. Along with Kemeny and Rudicella and Sullivan and Knoll for the ice dogs. They try to steal one here at St. Mike's, bouncing puck at center. McKeever and Ben Belagui are back in. Majors not taking any chances with that puck. They give it to their coach, Dave Cameron. He's not happy with it, but he'd rather have that than the defenseman caught. And finally. So the faceoff will be inside the Toronto line. Tim Brent against O'Sullivan. Brent actually stays in for this faceoff. O'Sullivan and the Ice Dogs get that puck right down in front of Justin Peters. But now Tim Brent, cross ice speed for Kadatsky on the left wing. Can't handle the pass to Butera. Behind his own net. Look out, Peralta coming down. Majors keep it in. Tim Brent fires it deep. Kadatsky takes his man down. That's Butera behind the net. Butera looking at the official, thinking, I don't know if I touched that puck. But I think now with Brian 11-13 remaining here in the third, I don't know how often the official's going to want to pull that whistle out here. For well, a team in the hole. You don't want to... You don't want to call it cheapy, there's no question about that. But uh, we said a while ago, but when it was 1-1, we thought the next goal might be it. We got two goals in about two minutes. Rohrbeck waved out again. Boyce will step in this time against Grawweiler. Good at the point, gets around one man. Boy, he had the shot, but he passes for Wilson, who fires one high. And Dale Good walked into the slot, and I don't think he knew how much that opened up for him. Uh, you're absolutely right. Rora Beck against the boards with Boyce and power for the majors. Grawweiler, Payne Show, and Stokes for Mississauga. Boyce carries it down low behind the red line. Now for Rora Beck. Looks in front, gets the puck there, loose puck. They bang away at it and covering up his chance. And again, the official blowing the play, but not in the best position to see if that puck is loose or not. Chance did indeed cover it up that time. No, but uh, good, good uh, forechecking from St. Mike's. Watch the shot that Power takes. 
I think it's uh, Ryan Stokes gives him a little shot late there, but the referee got to be pretty blatant before he calls. But you were right about Dale Good. He made a, a nice move on the four checker. And he, I don't think he realized how much room he had for a good shot. He was in better position than his defensive partner, and he made the pass. Haskins at his own blue line. Pass for Clutterbuck at center. The rookie gets it up towards Vitarelli, but Jared intercepts. Now here's Bass trying to split the D through Perry and Clutterbuck and takes it down to the red line. Clutterbuck steps into his man. Penalty coming up against St. Mike's. I think Clutterbuck will draw an elbowing penalty. But again, after what we've seen let go in this game, it, you just have no clue right now as to what the official is going to decide is a penalty. Oh, and, I, and, and that's every, not to say this wasn't. It's just a tough one to figure out. And I, I think every time there's a penalty... Oh, there's two on the play. Well, so figure that out. Well, maybe it worked this time. What I was going to say is every time there's a penalty, the offending team tries to draw the other team into a scrum. 12, maybe... uh, 12 St. Mike's, two minutes elbowing. Seven Mississauga, two minutes roughing. Well, it, it actually worked for Clutterbuck this time. He was getting the original penalty for elbowing, and uh, he, he drew him into a scrum. Who is that for uh, Mississauga? I think it's Nathan, uh, or sorry. Uh, That's Jared. Jared. He drew him into the scrum, and he got the extra penalty for rough, uh, or got the other penalty. It would have been a power play for Mississauga. Now, I will say this, because we're not privy to the conversations on the ice. If the, if the official does say, for example, to Jared, you've got the two, you've got the power play, leave it alone, and then he throws an extra shot, well, then the official oh, exactly. is in his own right to make that call. But if he doesn't at least let the player know that it's... Uh, and that's also what the teammates have to come into action here and tell the guys, say, look, they're getting penalty back up. Yeah. It's one thing getting the extra shot in, but if you can get your team in a power play situation like this game five in the semi-finals puck at center ice Peralta trying to dig it loose from Curran love pass called by the linesman and we'll face it off looks like just on the Toronto side of center ice as you get a look at Sal Peralta from Leamington Ontario making his way to the bench he's got one assist on the night 11 points in the playoffs. Haskins and O'Sullivan. Haskins wins the faceoff. Four-on-four four hockey again. We've seen some of the best hockey in this game, four-on-four. Four. We've seen a lot of it, so... Certainly have a lot to judge. Good. The Majors with the hash marks. Right side. Spins back up top. There's Haskins with the shot. That goes off the boot of Abraham. And the deflection was not enough to get on net. Now O'Sullivan with speed on good. O'Sullivan taken down on the play. Darren does not go up. He's played by Dale Good. And the other way, it's Daryl Boyce working on Stokes. Pulls up halfway down. Tries to cycle it into the corner for Haskins. Hackins and Abraham. Abraham gets a stick in the way of Haskins. Huck bounces high into the air. O'Sullivan was cut by Good, or at least clipped. And now Patrick O'Sullivan makes his way to the bench. Majors behind the net, Wilson. He's got a pretty goal in his back pocket in this game already. Majors need another one, though, and that cross-ice pass is two lines. Intended for Tim Brent. 23 seconds remaining in the four-on-four. 8.46 left here in the third, if you just join us. We're tied at two in the Eastern Conference OHL Final. Toronto and Mississauga tied at two in the series. And there's the captain for the Majors. He said he would have to produce more. He does have, he have three goals, 11 assists coming into the game. Just one assist in this series, but he's picked up his second assist of the series. On Connor Cameron's goal. His first point since the opening game of the series. And here comes the Team Canada Junior across the line. Takes the shot, and that one got by Chance. But it was wide of the mark. Now the ice stop. The other way, Jared's up in the penalty box. Three of them over the line. Look out! He just cut to Pancho! And it's Scott Lehman been doing that the entire series. Ryan had told me before the game, watch number 11 tonight, and he has lived up to the billing. Yes, and Lehman is just getting ready to line this one up. He's not playing the puck at all. Great job. Even from Windsor, Ontario, 
Six foot one, 184 pounds. Picked up a couple goals in the playoffs as well. Two goals, two, two goals and two assists. Think your brother would like his style of play? Well, I certainly like his style. <laughs> Suit him up. Defense the deliver hits like that. They are gold at any level of hockey. And the majors now with McKeever. Oh, the puck carrier gets it across center ice before it's dumped in. Chance leaves it for Abraham. Here comes Warabek. Roaring in to the corner. Bain now three on two the other way. Old Sullivan with speed down this left wing. That's where he's been so dangerous in the series. But unable to cut to the middle this time to take the shot as Ted Perry brings it back. And Ted Perry getting wiser with the years. Just dumps it into the Mississauga zone. There's the time. Is another big hit on the play. Rohrbeck still throwing his weight around. But Ted Perry might have tried to do a little bit more on the play. But he has learned through the years. Look out. There's a late hit on Powell. Chris Bain is the tough guy on Mississauga. He came from the London Knights earlier in the season. Over 200 penalty minutes. Three goals and nine assists this season. Now that's not the penalty there. That's Rohrbeck. Here we go. That. Now that, that looks like whether you could call it roughing or elbowing. It, it really didn't look as bad in the replay as the results would show right here. Now slow motion is sometimes hard to tell. The stick, whether it's the stick or the elbow, it definitely got up. Well, we have a moment. Let's go to another segment of our fans in the stands. Here's Alexis. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, thanks, guys. I'm here with Mississauga fan Adam. Adam, the series is tied 2-2. The game is tied 2-2. Would you rather this than... No. Um... You were saying earlier that you think the games are intense when they're close. Would you prefer this than having an outright Mississauga win? Yeah. And I, and All right, thanks so much. I've got some free pizza pizza slices for you. Let's send it back up to the guys. And you see our spotlight player being helped off the ice to oh, the bench, not the room. You know what? He, he, it looks like he's favoring his right ankle or right knee. It's a, his leg anyhow, so I don't know if he fell awkwardly there because the... Unless I saw something wrong, I mean, I, I saw it, it looked like some kind of a blow to the head, whether it was an elbow or a stick, but uh, it's his leg that he's favoring as he went off the ice there. Well, I don't know how many opportunities the Majors won on power plays tonight, but they certainly had them. It's another Sheila Show's power play with Chris Bain of Sudbury in the penalty box, and it's fired the length of the ice by Mr. Saga right away. And the Majors will have to start from their own end. Dustin Van Belagui for Sal Peralta. Look for Tim Brent, right wing over the line. He dumps it into the corner and behind the net. Curran, he takes a bump. Peralta with a puck. Vitarelli back to the point. Van Belagui settles it down. Wilson back for Van Belagui. Traffic in front. Tim Brent is there. They've got to get the shot on net with their captain in front of the goal. Now nobody in front of the net. Vitarelli as Brent goes to the corner for the pass. Behind the net, Peralta trying to come out front with it. Vitarelli. Won't get to the puck, Van Belagui does back at the point. Right side, Van Belagui fans on the pass in, and here comes Mississauga, three on two, led by Quincy, left side, fires a shot, and the save is made by Peter. Current takes Van Wilson now, and it's so much job on the Ice Dogs, as the Majors hesitated in getting a shot on net with this man advantage. Vitarelli, nice move to the faceoff, John, and he's tied up. Now in the corner. Puck bounces off the glass. Peralta picks it up, takes it behind the net. He's got Tim Brent on that side with him. It's back to Wilson, and look out. Page goes out there along with Grawweiler, and Wilson gets in Grawweiler's way, and the Ice Dogs get it into the Toronto zone. Now Grawweiler picks it up, and just enough for the pad save by Justin Peters. Back comes St. Mike's. Over the line, Cameron turns, passes for Haskins. 20 seconds left of the power play. We're tied at two. Behind the Mississauga net. Loose puck. 
try to dig away at it and bring it up. Darrell Boyce on the board, gets it away at Abraham, looks up ice and puts it right into his own team bench with six seconds left in the Majors power play. And not much of any shots on net against David Chance with the man advantage. Well, they had good control for a while, but Mississauga had a couple of good scoring opportunities shorthanded on that uh, power play. And it looks like Colin Powers has just left the ice. One of our spotlight players. I don't know if the camera can follow him down there to continue with our spotlight on him at the end of the game. And Bain is out of the penalty box and Colin Powers out of this hockey game due to injury, at least for now. Ed Perry. 5.20 to go here in the third. Tied at two and icing is called. Against St. Mike's. And this World Series, we just had an announcement made in the building, I believe, about the Guelph London Series. I didn't hear it. I heard some screams from the crowd, which might suggest that Maybe Guelph got the job oh, done. Did you see that? No, I guess there not. we go. I guess not. What a oh comeback. My. And you'd have to think. It was 3 1 the game for Guelph. Now, now they're going to London. Yep. London won an overtime last night. They're losing 2 1 in the third period today. You'd have to have that. Center in front, and Peters loves it down. Sorry, Jerry. You see, Ice Dogs just play. Let's throw it to the front of the net, and why not? That's a dangerous one. Let's watch it. It's always a good play, as we said earlier. Just get it to towards the net, good things happen. Now, he made that original save, Peters did, but then it bounced up. I think it actually hits his defenseman. It comes right back at him. Now behind the major net, this is Saga with possession and out front. Nobody can get their stick on it. That backhand doesn't get to the net, and now Peralta circles and gets the puck up towards center ice of Mississauga. Saga. Fires it right back in to the Toronto zone. Now it's center ice Peralta. Trying to get around Stokes with a move. Still has puck possession though on his backhand. Oh my goodness. Gave it right to O'Sullivan who skates up the center. Nobody there though except Knowles on the left side and O'Sullivan trying to do it on his own. And Stokes gets down the bouncing puck out near center ice and now skates forward with it over the Toronto line. Stokes, as we've seen in this game, players. Get right to the net on some lone rushes. Moravec into the base. Boyce trying to throw that puck out front. A chance came out to play. Now Zanowski the other way. Zanowski with Payne showing Grawweiler. Leaving in the corner. Moravec trailing. He gets a stick on the puck and then comes out front. Finally clears outside the Toronto line. And this is Saga with Quincy. Cross ice for Butera. It's the puck to center before he dumps it in. No icing on the play of the lines, but he can hear him in the background with a holler. Quincy keeps it in at the point. Puck along the near boards now. Collision along the sideboard. Now the Mississauga left wing. Hunter Cameron lifts it, can't clear it. Skating right by the puck was Roravec on Drawweiler. Gave the slash. No tall play continues on. Boyce tries to throw it right up the middle, and Payne Show chases after it in the corner. Boyce, the first player back to recover with 3.20 to go, will hold it for a face-off. And this is August starting to get the edge here in puck possession in the latter stages of this period. Well, a few uh, dangerous passes uh, or unfortunate bounces made by uh, St. Mike. They had a potential three-on-two coming out of their end and the pass hit somebody in the skate. Created a scoring opportunity for Mississauga. Monday, April 26th at London will be game seven of that series. The seven o'clock face-off at the John LeBanc Center. Off the draw. We'll do it all over again as the puck landed underneath. Cody Bass of Owen Sound. So far, Brian, in the series, we have not had a game to go to overtime, but we are 317 away from that. Becoming a reality. Face off to the right of Justin Peters. Bass against Haskins. Kameni back at the point along with Quincy for Mississauga. Up goes forward off the face off. Down behind the Toronto red line. McKeever short side out front of his net. Up ahead for Clutterbuck. Clutterbuck gets the puck deep. 
to many against Minarelli in collision. Back to the point, McKeever fires! And with traffic in front, Jets covers up. Haskins driving to the net, creating the screen, and that was almost perfectly timed. You know, that was, that was a perfect bounce back to the defenseman. He got that shot on net. I think Vitarelli passes it back to him. As you can see, the traffic going in front of the net. That Haskins in front of the net causing trouble. That wasn't an easy one to stand. Clutterbuck, Vitarelli, Haskins go to the bench. It's Tadatsky, Tim Brent, and Sal Peralta as we're getting down to the uh, point of the game where Dave Cameron cut it down to two lines, Brian. And it's O'Sullivan out there along with Bass and Curran for Mississauga. Stoker is in the Abraham left it outside the Mississauga line. Tim Brent now fires it right back in. Under three minutes to go, tied at two. And he comes to the NHL Eastern final current. Backhand off the boards. O'Sullivan at center ice. He's tied up when he gets it deep in the Toronto zone. Peters has to play it. His backhand by Peralta. Look out, here comes Curran with a head of steam. Gets it at the point by Abraham. Now Curran at the dot takes the shot on the glove save. Made by Justin Peters. A white on Terry when he'll hold it for a face off. 2.31 remaining here in the third, tied at two. And the faceoff will be in the Toronto end to the right of Justin Peters. O'Sullivan will lean in to take the faceoff against Rorabek. Ryan Rorabek, Carolina draft pick. Faceoff goes along the left wing boards for the Ice Dogs. Wilson for Dale Good. He clears the zone up to center ice. Boyce. Tied up by Abraham, Rohrbeck keeps the puck in the zone, throws it deep. Racing after it, getting there first, Cameron throws it right onto the stick of Knowles, loses it and escapes. Rohrbeck along the board, trying to keep it deep, O'Sullivan keeping watch. And with 2.07 remaining in the third, the faceoff will come in the Mississauga zone. Well, coming up after the game, we'll have a playoff update. We'll have our play of the game, our scoring summary as well. And, of course, if we do go to overtime, we've got some top-shelf drill footage standing by for you. I think Shani wants to work on that butterfly side-to-side <laughs> -side move. Well, now we've got also Metro Finest standing behind us, Brian, so I don't know what you've done, but try to stay composed here in the dying moment, me. will you? Face off of the Mississauga zone. It'll be Haskins against O'Sullivan. Sullivan wins the faceoff. Puck goes off the glass and a strange bounce. It stays in the Mississauga zone. Haskins and O'Sullivan. They fight for it along the boards. And now it's flying around. There's Clutterbuck with a head of steam. Goes into the boards with Cavetti. Now Clutterbuck will chase after it. Chance out to play it. Had his pocket picked by Vitarelli. Back of the point. Good can't keep it in. Look out. Rudicella giving chase. And Wilson is there. Up for Clutterbuck. Clutterbuck now across the line. Pass for Vitarelli. Vitarelli takes the shot, and Wilson was in the slot. But that puck never did find him. Now it's center ice. Three ice dogs. Quincy over the line. No one to drop it to. Back comes Clutterbuck. He's got to be running out of gas, but the rookie keeps going. Fires the shot. Pass, save, rebound. Shane makes the save. Fired into the post. Rebound again. Goes off the chance and off the glass as Vitarelli is tied up in front of the net. He gives a tug at Quincy. As he slowly comes to his feet, my goodness, 115 remaining in what they call a barn burner here at St. Mike. Well, watch this puck. Kind of goes into no man's land. The rebound comes right out here, and Noel gets stuck in front of the net, not sure whether, whether to go or not. And St. Mike's almost got to go on the rebound. The puck bounces right in front there. Noel's in front of the net, not sure whether to leave the front area or go to the puck. 115 remaining, tied at two. Tim Brent will take the face off against Lucas Drawweiler in the Mississauga zone to the right of David Schantz. Drawweiler's got his face off partner all tied up. Tim Brent back in the Mississauga zone and the puck is cleared. No icing on the play as Schantz leaves it for Stokes. Last minute of play in regulation time. Stokes will start the rush. 
Ice Dogs, the majors tied at two in the game and the series. There's a turnover. Daryl Boyce, right side, backhand to the net. Safe by Shed. They dig at it. Tim Brett looking for the loose puck. And he's knocked to the ice. And he'll get himself out of there. Rawweiler in front of him. Well, that was some dangerous stick handling by defenseman Ryan Stokes for Mississauga trying to carry the puck out of his own end. With last man back and he coughs it up. Lucky Adam Abraham gets back there. O'Sullivan on to take the face off. So Tim Brent for Alton Boyce go to the bench. It's Rora back against O'Sullivan. That's the matchup Dave Cameron wants. And off the draw. Butera behind his own net. 40 seconds left in regulation time. Rora back. Tries to center it. Clutterbuck now. That goes off of Butera's leg. O'Sullivan off the glass. And out towards center ice. Somebody's listening to Don Cherry when he's around. Use the glass. Use the glass. One of Drake's favorites. And that one's tipped up over the glass. And the faceoff will come outside the Mississauga line. And now a little bit of pushing and shoving after the whistle. I would think that you just might want to get to the faceoff circle and not have yourself given. Even if it's a coincidental two, you're off the ice for overtime, perhaps. No penalties on the play. The referee telling the players to line it up for the faceoff. Just outside the Mississauga blue line. 22.9 seconds remaining. And it looks like the St. Mike's doesn't want to go to overtime. They want to end it now. They've been going on the offense for the last three minutes pretty hard. Off the faceoff. It's dumped in. Left wing corner, Vitarelli and Abraham. Abraham gets there first. Now Haskins down on Stokes. Jarrett on the boards. Left side gets the puck to center ice. Now the Majors almost steal one, but it's turned back by Mississauga with four seconds to go. Look out as Stokes gives Vitarelli an extra ride with two seconds to go. Right underneath our broadcast location here at St. Michael's College School Arena. And unless somebody's got some magic in him in two seconds, we're going to overtime. For the first time in the series, let's see where they set up for this faceoff, though. Maybe there is a chance for Mississauga. Uh, it'll be pretty far out, though, just inside the Toronto line. O'Sullivan against Haskins, and off the faceoff, that will do it. Puck is flipped up into the crowd, and Pinarelli and Bass give each other an extra little tug. But, boys, if you want to be part of overtime, you might want to turn, ignore, and go to the room. Tied at two through three periods of regulation play, and for the first time in this series, we're going to overtime. The teams will take a break, and we'll have Roger Lejoie get us through our first intermission of overtime next as the OHL playoffs continue on Rogers Television. There's a lot of sugar in the diet of both these teams as we're headed for an extra period in Game 5 of the OHL Final. Welcome back, everybody. Roger Lajoie with you. Well, this series had pretty much everything. Split of games, both teams playing well, and overtime, I guess, had to be expected sometime. And we got it tonight for Game 5. And you heard earlier in the broadcast, the London Knights beating Guelph 5-2 to tonight. That series tied up now 3-3, headed for Game 7. And we are headed for a fourth period here tonight at Toronto St. Michael's College School Arena. Aaron Bell joins me, Director of Information of the Ontario Hockey League and Canadian Hockey League. And Aaron, always fun to visit with you. And I'll tell you what, what a great series this has been. And I know part of the reason this series gets the exposure as does is the post-game press conferences and Direct Energy uh, doing a job. And that's one of the reasons we get to see you in the rink all the time. Well, yeah, Direct Energy really came to the table uh, with the Ontario Hockey League this year for our conference finals here in the East and the Western Conference between Guelph and London and, and into our championship series. Aaron, uh, you know, a lot of people are not even aware that the Bobby Orr Trophy goes to the winner of this series. The Wayne Gretzky Trophy goes to the Western. Uh, good, good pick, by the way, on those two guys. Great veteran players and alumni of this league. But it is a championship trophy these guys are playing for. And I know that uh, Dave Branch is in uh, Guelph tonight. Uh, now, not presenting the trophy, but in case the series ends. That's a great part of life in the OHL. Yeah, it really is, and as you know, you know our teams really play an unbalanced schedule, and, and they play within the Eastern Conference and Western Conference. They predominantly play those games. So, you know, to win the the Bobby Orr Trophy, the Wayne Gretzky Trophy, I mean, obviously, great alumni of our league. Who, who better could you possibly have asked for? And uh, it is an honor for those guys to to play for those trophies. 
It does show you how hard it is, Aaron. I know in your role with the Canadian Hockey League, and we talk about this many times before, but, you know, 56 teams start the season trying to win a Memorial Cup. 20 teams start the OHL season trying to get to this level, and only two will move on. And you, any league that's got 10 teams in it deserves a trophy. I think it's terrific, and I think it's mirrors the National Hockey League. It shows you just how hard it is to win a championship. Well, a championship at any level is, is obviously very difficult to win. When you get the parity that you have in our league, um, you know, you, you can see it, the competitive nature that's there, game in, game out, 68 games in the regular season, and then it's a long road to get there. And then to ultimately play for the Memorial Cup, you know, it, it, they say it's the toughest trophy to win. I certainly wouldn't argue. You know, I, I don't have a Memorial Cup ring, and I don't know too many people that do. It's a tough thing to win. Well, there is no doubt. 56 teams competing for one trophy, and of course that comes up in Kelowna, British Columbia, May 15th to the 23rd this year. However, before the Memorial Cup comes, got to get through these OHL playoffs. See London Guelph going back, and I know you've seen some games in that series, uh, Aaron. What a marvelous achievement for London to come back in that series. But you know, how can you not expect that from a team that had 110 points in the regular season? Well, absolutely. Uh, Mark Hunter, Dale Hunter, OHL Coach of the Year this year, OHL Executive of the Year this year. Uh, 9,100 people in that John Labatt Center on a regular basis, um, you know, bid to host the Memorial Cup this week. They hosted our, uh, our REMAX Canada Russia Challenge, the Home Hardware Top Prospects game. Uh, what more could you possibly say? They've done an unbelievable job there. Uh, and like you say, a team doesn't get to 110 points. They set a record, an OHL record this year, a team record for wins. And, you know, for them to, to put together that kind of a season, they're down 3-1 and you think, well, you know, what's going to happen here? But uh, you can't keep a good team down and they've got some great players there. You know, Corey Perry's really come up big for them. Uh, Dennis Weidman, unbelievable defenseman back there and, and uh, you know, has come up very big for them. And uh, I think it's going to be one heck of a Game 7. Game 7, Monday night, the John Labatt Center in London, Ontario. Finally, Aaron, I know you're a busy guy all the time, but this time is the craziest time of the year for you, because not only, of course, you're following the OHL final and doing the post-game press conferences, et cetera, et cetera, but the OHL draft is coming up, of course, next Saturday. That's got to be prepared for. And as well, you mentioned the Memorial Cup bid uh, process. Maybe first a little bit about the Memorial Cup bid process and then uh, the draft. How did that go on Wednesday? Well, it was outstanding. We had five teams that uh, bid to host the 2005 MasterCard Memorial Cup. This year is the first year that the OHL has, has awarded the, the winner of that a year ahead of time. Uh, first time in several years, anyway. And uh, in two weeks or so, they'll announce who, the, who is going to be the successful host for the 2005 tournament. They'll get the opportunity to go out to Kelowna and see how, uh, see how the event goes. And, you know, they had five bids there. They were all outstanding. Uh, London bid, as we mentioned earlier, Kitchener, Erie, Sarnia, Barry. And, uh, you know, they really, I think, all really, uh, really wowed the committee. And finally, the OHL draft. And I know it's very unique in the OHL because it's an Internet-only draft in every sense of the word. The drafting, there is no central location. The uh, CHL office in Scarborough is kind of where everybody gathers, but each team does it individually. And I know that's a, a unique thing that the OHL is very proud of. Well, unique is right. This is the fourth year that we've done it. The first year and even second year, we had a little you know, trepidation, Hope, hopefully everything would go well. As you know, with the internet, uh, you, there's always a, the potential for something to go, go wrong uh, from a technical standpoint. Yeah, I do broadcast, believe me. We've had a few in a couple of years. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's gone very well. The feedback from our teams has been outstanding. Um, the kids like it. They can sit at home. They can watch what's going on. Uh, last year, we introduced a, an internet radio show to go along with it, which where we interviewed some players and coaches and GMs and so on. So try to get a little bit of that live aspect to it as well, but this set next Saturday on the uh, OHL website, you can follow it, and uh, it's a very exciting day. Log in, OntarioHockeyLeague.com, plenty of great information on the OHL, due a large part uh, to our guest, Aaron Bell, Director of Information of the OHL and the CHL. Aaron, enjoy this overtime with the rest of us, and we'll see you at the post-game press conference. Thanks so much. Thank you, Roger. That's Aaron Bell of the OHL and the CHL. Let's take a look now at our scoring summary from period number three, and Majors fans, oh boy. Ryan Wilson gave them a lead at the 43-second mark from Peralta and Brent. Then Blair Jarrett at 2.30 from Bain and Rudicella. The shot's 31-28 Toronto. Overtime is coming up next. Don't go away. This is OHL Primetime. Lots of minor hockey kids in attendance, and it might be a little bit past the bedtime by the time we finish, but who cares? It's playoff hockey after all. Game 5, OHL Eastern Conference Championship Series, living up to the advanced billing for sure. 2-2, Mississauga Ice Dogs and the Toronto St. Michael's Majors tied in this game, tied in this series. In Guelph tonight, the London Knights have done it. They beat the Guelph Storm 5-2.
They stave off elimination. The best of seven Western Conference Series is tied 3-3. Game seven will be Monday night at the John Labatt Center in London. Who takes a 3-2 lead into Mississauga for game six on Sunday in this series? We'll find out when this overtime finally ends. Well, we've got the overtime, so we've got a little extra time for some more top shelf drill. Our latest edition shows you one-timers. The three key things to remember about one-time shooting is don't take a great big wind-up, only have your stick about halfway up in the air. Also make sure that your bottom hand is able to move, but yet get a firm grip on the stick so it doesn't turn the blade of the stick open when the pass hits it. And also, the third thing is make sure you've got good foot movement because you may have to adjust to a bad pass. Being able to shoot the puck on your off wing or the one-time shot is a very important skill in hockey. It's important because if you can shoot the puck without stopping it, you gain the advantage by having the goalie not being able to get across to the side of the net as easy. Here you'll see Gordy making nice cross-ice diagonal pass. Matt's able to move his feet, adjust to the bad pass, and still get the shot on net. It's important to have a real tight bottom hand. It's also important to shoot the puck quickly without stopping it, taking a little bit of ice behind the puck rather than trying to shoot the puck itself. If the pass comes across nice and hard, it's easier to shoot it because you don't have to wait for the puck to get there quite as long. It's a great way to learn how to score goals on your off wing. A good drill to work on your off wing shot or the one time shot is a two on oh crisscross drill where you end up on your off wing. Nice pass across crisscross, show him my stick, and shoot the puck without stopping. And thanks again to the great folks at the Top Shelf Drill for another edition of that fine segment. Well, the play of the period, there were a lot of good ones in period three. With it, here's Dan Dunleavy and Brian Shanahan. Gentlemen. Well, Roger, thank you very much, and you're right. There were a couple of definite plays of the periods that we could have chosen here, Brian. You look at the goal by Wilson for St. Mike's, but we've chosen the Mississauga goal that tied this game up, and Jarrett was the goal scorer. Yes, and it was a great individual effort just shortly after Wilson scored the go-ahead goal, but uh, uh, Jarrett puts the nice move on the one-on-one -on, -one on the defender, and then he finished it off with a nice move on the goalie going to his backhand for the goal. We're going to see it here. He's going to be on the right-hand side of your screen there, but look at that nice move on the defender. Now, the defender might have gone for the puck a bit too much, but the final finish on the goaltender. There you go. And it threw the backhand upstairs. And that was an important goal, obviously. Put them into overtime. Well, of course, it answered back quickly after Wilson had scored yep. a very similar goal in dancing through the Mississauga defense in an end-to-end -end rush. And Mississauga showed, well, we're going to match a play for a play. Overtime is coming up. Let's go downstairs to Roger. Guys, thanks very much. We'll be right back up there for the overtime. Don't forget, game six in this series, Sunday night at the Hershey Center in Mississauga. A audio webcast will be available at the Majors official site, stmichaelsmajors.com. Also on the Ice Dogs site as well at mississaugaicedogs.com. Game five in the balance, 2-2. Overtime is on the way. With the call, let's go upstairs. Dan Dunleavy and Brian Shanahan. Well, for the first time in this series, anyway, we'll have some overtime. But, Brian, you were looking up the overtime history of these two teams just moments ago, and there's not a lot of it in the playoffs, but uh, each team has been pushed to the extra frame. That's right, and, and both teams have lost all their overtime games. Uh, Mississauga has played overtime twice. They've lost uh, to Barry 2-1 and 3-2, and uh, St. Mike's has been a while since their overtime game against... Sudbury in the first round, but they also lost four to three in their one overtime game. So somebody's going to get a win here. We just don't know when. And we're underway as the puck rolls in on David Chance. He'll leave it there for Stokes behind his own net. Battle well, starts with Haskins, Flutterbuck, and Vitarelli. Flutterbuck on the four check. Create a turnover down the right wing corner. Jarrett. 
And Abraham for Mississauga. They push away at the puck. Vitarelli wants to face off. A nice job by Corey Vitarelli of Peterborough, Ontario to hold that one for a face off in the Mississauga zone to the left of David Shen. And there's generally two styles of playing overtime, sudden death overtime. One way is just hell bent for a goal, go all out. And uh, it looks like I, I think uh, St. Mice is going to play that style. I'm not sure if Mississauga is going to do it or not, but usually you see an overtime goal very early or things settle down and get into a, a bit of a groove. Puck is cleared down the ice. Icing will be called against Mississauga. So the majors who did have an opportunity off that faceoff to perhaps get a shot away but just could not get it through will line it up again. And now the most important matchup on the ice is going to be between... Looks like for St. Mike's, no Tyler Haskins will go to the bench. Here comes Ryan Rohrbeck. And he will take the faceoff against Owen Sound's Cody Bass. And the Ice Dogs leans in. Off the draw, back to the point. Good. Has trouble handling it. Gets the shot through, and it's off of Cameron's stick. And a slow roller is gobbled up by Abraham. And now Bass at center ice. Tips it around his man. Good. Off the boards and down the ice. And that will be icing against Toronto. So now Mississauga gets an opportunity in the offensive zone. Mississauga has been on its heels for the first part of the overtime and probably the last three or four minutes of regulation time. Zanowski, Grawweiler, and Chad Payne show. Tim Brent against Zanowski on the faceoff. Mississauga wins it. Quincy coming down for the point. Stripped to the puck. Kadatsky the other way. Cross ice pass. That's deflected beyond Peralta. Rutera gets there. Throws it for Quincy. Over off the board. Back to Rutera. Zanowski takes the feet on the left wing. Now up towards center ice and Grawweiler. Gets around Dale Good. Grawweiler fires a shot and did not miss by much. Rutera keeps it in at the point. Saved by Peters. He got the pad on it. And the Ice Dogs with a couple of shots. Now Peralta passes off. Kadatsky takes the shot. And the save is made. Lose puck behind the red line. In the Mississauga zone. Butera can't clear. Kept in. Wilson passes off. Brent fires a shot. It's blocked in front. Tim trying to dig it free. Quincy holds onto it. And we'll have a face off. Quincy lying on the ice in some discomfort. I don't know if he's trying to sell one as he now takes a look at the referee and slowly starts to make his way up. Well, I think Wilson gave him a bit of a jab, but he was going for the buck. I don't think it was that much. Quincy didn't realize it when he was down, but if he had scooped that puck out, he might have been giving his team an odd man rush, but better to play safe when they're putting the pressure on in your end. When you're lying down, you can't really see what's around you. O'Sullivan and Haskins. O'Sullivan wins it back for Abraham. And he'll start behind his own net. Haskins, Clutterbuck, and Vitarelli for St. Mike's. Abraham for Captain Rudicella too far. And fired right back into the Mississauga zone. Vitarelli offside. And the faceoff now for the Mississauga Ice Dogs will come outside of their blue line. 18.05 remaining in the first overtime period. And as you get a look at Adam Abraham. Adam Abraham from Gross Point Park. Michigan, if I'm not mistaken. And you are not. That's fired the length of the ice. Icing is called, and teams in their attempt to get the puck deep in the other club's zone are just uh, a little bit off on their timing as they approach the center ice red line. And now each, they're kind of going back and forth here, Brian, and trading face-offs in each other's zones, giving each other chances. Haskins now will lean in against Bill Sullivan. Haskins wins it to the right wing boards. Van Bettigui comes down. Clutterbuck is tied up by Knowles. Nice job. Clutterbuck did not get a stick on it. Haskins now on the right wing. They see the boards. Cycles for Boyce. Back to the point. Van Bettigui. Tip in front. And Dan got the glove on it. And the rookie came back close to ending it. Well, that was some good hand-eye coordination by Mike or Dave Ch Chance. It's Clutterbuck in front of the net, and he does get a deflection. It's not a real hard shot, but still, it changed direction. And Chance shows his composure there as he gloves the puck. Those are dangerous ones. 
and Bobby Sullivan will change the direction. Murray Bryan O'Sullivan will stay out there to take the face off against Rorbeck this time. Rorbeck, Vitarelli, and Connor Cameron. Face off. Leaves the puck roll behind the Mississauga red line. Another strange bounce off of the boards here at St. Mike's, but Quincy was ready for it. Then he turns it over. Cameron, he throws it out into open ice, and Curran for Mississauga just tries to toss it softly around Dale Good, but the Newmarket native is back for it. Behind his own net, moves the puck for Vitarelli. Corey Vitarelli to his own blue line, and at center ice, still carries, gets it across the line, but loses possession. Now Bass up for Curran. Bain on the far side across the line with Quincy as well. Fan in front of the net, and Peters covers up, and Mississauga is forced to face off in the Toronto zone. There's the Blythe, Ontario native. A good look in the goaltender's eyes. Dave Cameron counting on him. And the line he's sending over right now, in particular, Tim Brent to win this faceoff in their own zone to the left of Peters. Brent against Zanowski. Zanowski wins it. Back to the point. Butera just wants to get a shot through. That's off a of body. Doesn't make it in front of the net. Now Tim Brent on the backhand. Tries to lift it out off the glass. It's cleared by Kadatsky. Into the neutral zone. Rolling puck taken by Quincy. Cross ice Butera. Peralta on the four check. Now Tim Brent picks it up. They create the turnover. Brent and Peralta. They work well together across the line, but not this time. And Mississauga with a solid job breaking that one up. And it's fired right back into Mississauga zone. Tim Brent gets a stick on it. Chance has to play the puck. Brent down in the corner. Puck goes right to him. On his knees, he passes for Kadatsky. Kadatsky kicks it to the corner. Tim Brent for Peralta. Van Belagui coming down for the point, and the pass was deflected just beyond his reach. Van Belagui still down low. Nobody back at this right point for St. Mike's. Now Dustin is back as Tim Brent throws it down for Kadatsky against Quincy. Now Van Belagui coming down to keep the puck in. Coming over is McKeever as Tim Brent gets back to play defense. And Brawlweather comes to center right. Van Belagui. Almost hit Kadatsky. Now Van Belagui and offside is whistled against the Majors. And tough to hear the whistle on that play. I don't think all the fans heard it, so a lot of them were pretty as excited as he was shooting towards that net three seconds after the whistle had already gone. There you get a look at the faithful of St. Mike's. Getting late, they're hungry again. You get into overtime, you start to uh, you start to get the munchies, Brian. It's been a long time since you had something to eat. The fans need something. And if they don't get a goal soon, Boyce, Haskins, and Clutterbuck trying to make that happen now for St. Mike's. Stokes turns it over. Good, can't keep it in. O'Sullivan pass up ahead. Rudicella giving chase along with Knowles. McKeever collides with... Daryl Knowles, puck behind the red line. Haskins pinning Rudicella against the boards. Now Dale Good throws it up the boards, kept in by O'Sullivan. After O'Sullivan behind the red line. Flutterbuck tips it around his man, can't get by Stokes, though. A nice job by Ryan Stokes out of Sarnia. Make sure that the major transition did not happen. Knowles tips it across the line. Lehman back for it with Rudicella bearing down on him. Pass off the bench. There's a tip for Rorabek. He's got the puck at center ice. Vitarelli takes the feed, holds it, shoots it, saved by Chance, and he holds for a face off with 14.48 to go in the first overtime period here in Toronto. David Chance is showing why he was voted all rookie team goaltender. You know you Vitarelli, nice little move, gets a good shot away. No screen, and Chance makes the save look easy. Nice little two on two crisscross play. Stopping the ones he should. And he's making it look easy. Quincy around the boards for Curran. Rorabek gets his stick on it to break up the breakout. And now Lehman at center ice. Cameron tips it into the zone. To Benny and Quincy. Back for Mississauga. Curran as well. Rorabek with puck pressure. To Benny being watched by Cameron. Jarrett through the line and just out. Now it's center ice Curran. He's on his own. That puck looked like it went off a major's player on the bench. High stick being indicated by the official, but Mississauga does not touch up. 
And the majors will send it one off the glass at the center right. Early puck knocked down by Vitarelli. He gives chase into the corner. Vitarelli and Stokes. They bump. Stokes with a puck for Curran. Tim Brent creeping in. Bouncing puck. Kept in by the majors. Kadatsky at the point. Curran throws a pretty good left at Kadatsky. Kadatsky stands up fast and Curran fires one long range. And Peters makes the save. Pass up ahead for McKeever. He uses the glass to get the puck to center right. Now Kadatsky on the right wing over the line. Kadatsky takes the shot off a leg. Loose puck. Kadatsky centers in front. Nobody home. Just ice dogs. And here comes Pacho with Payne and Kadatsky. There's the shot. Rebound in the Here's another look at the game winner. Well, it's Payne Show takes the slap shot, but the rebound is not a good one. If you're a St. Mike's fan, but a great one if you're an Ice Dogs fan. Well, and Wilson got caught watching the puck here as he let Sanoski go right by him. And the Mississauga Ice Dogs are going home a confident bunch. And for the Majors to stay alive, they've got to win their first game of this playoff series in Mississauga. They've got to score their first goal in Mississauga. They haven't scored in the two games in Mississauga. That goal coming at 6.33 of the overtime period. Zanoski with the winner. And the Majors and Ice Dogs will do it again Sunday night. 8 o'clock in Mississauga. Roger Lejoie will have the call on stmichaelsmajors.com. More on that in our game wrap in a moment when we continue with our coverage of the OHL playoffs on Rogers Television.